Hello, folks, and hey there. Welcome to the Nate Land Podcast. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code NATE. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit 50, prize picks will give you 50. Don't forget to enter promo code NATE at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Also, summer may get all the excitement, but nothing beats the great outdoors during the fall. Prepare for your best outdoor memories yet and save big during the Solo Stove Fall event. Plus, use, use, use the promo code NATE at solostove.com for an extra $10 off. Solostove.com, promo code NATE for $10 off on top of all the fall event deals. Hurry. The fall event ends November 10th. All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're glad you're here. I'm sitting here with Brian Bates, Aaron Weber, Dusty Slay, locked up from what I've heard. <laughs> if that's true, is it? He... <laughs> What happened? Manslaughter? <laughs> Slaughter of a man. Well, last time you said that about Aaron, people believed it. Dusty even more so. I would, I would say, say yeah. Dusty's more believable yeah. for sure. Uh, uh, Dusty someone, had the trailer come over, <laughs> threw off some fireworks. Someone debated close. Christianity, and he started throwing fist. Uh, throwing yeah. fist. He's yeah. been known to do it. Yeah, so Dusty's going to – he'll be back in six to eight months. And, <laughs> Good uh, behavior. <laughs> <laughs> There's with luckily good beer. Yeah. No, Dusty's uh fine. He was on the road, uh couldn't get back. And we have uh he will be in here shortly, as we've learned you see from the comments <laughs> or from the title of it. But uh Kevin Neeland is here, uh, which we're excited. He's got a, a new book, I exaggerate my brushes with frame. Very cool book. Fame. Fame. My brushes with fame. Uh frameworks too. That's frameworks another art too. term. Yeah. yeah. And then it's it's yeah it's awesome it's 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 a, a portrait that he did of all these uh, celebrities and just you know crazy people we've met and the stories on how he met them very very good idea for a book uh, you know it's hard to come up with a book like that seems interesting and this seems like a very fun it's you know you read it it's very fun yeah it's great it's very fun. It. I look forward to it because it's just like this is the kind of book that I like where it's like David Letterman. And then you just, you know. It's perfect for you because it's easy reading and there's lots of pictures. Yeah. And if you lose track, you can just look at whoever the picture is. And yeah. Remember and who like, who was that? <laughs> oh, yeah. David Letterman. Yep. And the artwork's amazing, too. Yeah. It really is. He's good. Uh, oh, he has Andy Coffin. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. Wow. All right. We'll talk to him about that. Uh I'll, when he gets here, too, I'll talk about my weekend. Uh, you guys had you, you had big headlining weekend. Yeah, my first weekend at the Comedy Catch in Chattanooga, and it went great. Uh, lots of folks came out. First show Friday night. Uh, I mean, I felt like I did really, really well. And then when I said goodnight, some people up front stood. Wow. And I was like, wow, I didn't, I guess I did even better than I thought. <laughs> yeah. And then afterwards in line, they were like, we just did that because you said on the <laughs> yeah. podcast about not getting standing elevation. <laughs> yeah. But, but it still looked good, and then show two, some people did it again, and That's by funny. the next night, people were over it. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> then you got into the real crowd. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was one. Uh, I have one breakfast moment where somebody, a folk, said they saw it. I was sitting in the back. You know, the the owner there, the comedy catch, just like you know, you just want to earn their respect. Yeah, and I feel like for fifteen years, right. I've never got his respect, and I had really good shows Friday night and good crowds. I'm like, man, but he still hadn't said a word to me. And yeah. I felt like nothing had changed. And then Saturday night, I'm sitting back there before the show, and he comes over and he goes, "Hey, Brian." And I'm thinking he's gonna like, "You killed it last night. You're doing a great job." And he's like, "Give up this table so these people can see. <laughs> yeah. Move over there." Yeah, <laughs> that's the only thing he said to me all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> but somebody saw it and they thought it was very funny. I, I like that uh, people are catching it because when I'm not there, I like to I like to hear the report. <laughs> you like I'm, to report back. I like to report back of breakfast sightings. Yeah. and just like something that's not yeah happening. You wearing your button down and you have to grab your things and move over. Like <laughs> my merch and all that. Merch and you get, yeah. I don't even think about the merch. That's so funny. You get a box of shirts. <laughs> yeah. What do you have? Shirts. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for all the folks that came out. Yeah, that's thank so you. cool. 
Uh, for sure, man. Yeah. Where were you at? I was in just down the road from you, Brian. I was in Atlanta, Georgia at the mm. Punchline Headline. Had a few people come see me there. Like, we saw Brian last night. Oh, wow. So a bunch of folks were double dipping mm. this weekend. So that's a lot of fun. All the shows were were great. Thanks to everybody that came out. I, uh, I was in pain all weekend. It was kind of a bummer. I got my wisdom teeth taken out on Tuesday. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I had, uh, I think it's called a dry socket. Yeah. Um, it was not good. Like I was in l- legitimate pain for most of the weekend. I almost, I almost for the late show Friday was like, I can't do the show. Cause I got off stage and my jaw was like locked up and I couldn't, could barely talk. After show one? After show one, it was like, this could be a problem. So I just sat in the green room and like rubbed my jaw for like an hour. It was bad all weekend. I feel better now, but. If you uh, if you were at the shows and I looked like I was in pain, that's you what were. was that's what was happening. It Fall was not good. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did they look like they were in pain? No. <laughs> one show. One show is very funny. It, it's like a, a certain point stuff doesn't even bother me anymore. If it's so, if somebody's so disrespectful in the crowd, yeah. it's almost funny. Yeah. Uh, late show Friday. I mean, woman never faced me the entire show. Would just look yeah. at looking at the bathroom, <laughs> and every now and then I'd say a word that she recognized, and she'd like kind of look over <laughs> her shoulder and go like, "Yeah," and then just look back, and she faced the wall the entire time. Mm-hmm. One guy was uh, girls asleep in the front, and then the, so that you know that stuff's going on where it's like this is almost. I'm not even mad yeah. about this. This is so funny. It's par for the course. Right, right, right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, but other than that, like the shows, the shows were all great. I was in pain, but I had a good time. They have that going on. You got a dry socket going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, just a mess of a show. Anyone near the stage was just a mess, <laughs> like including Aaron and the people in the front. <laughs> just everybody was going through it that right, day. Right. I well, got to get my wisdom teeth out. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I, I think in January, like trying to find the time to do it. How many days? So Tuesday, because I think I'm doing it. Because I uh, I showed the thing. I got into the AT and T Pebble Beach Pro Am, and. Uh, but I'm doing it, I think, the week before that, like a Monday, and then I'll fly out for that on that Sunday. So I'm home. You'll be fine. Yeah. I think it's rare what happened to me. I was fine. It's like four days afterwards, it started hurting. What would you do to get a dry socket? I think I didn't do any of the stuff they tell you not to do, smoke or anything like that. Like, But I just looked, and there's just a big hole in my – I think the blood clot or whatever heals over the yeah. – it just came out. How many did you have removed? I had three. I mean, are you having? I think I only have three. Yeah, yeah. You only have three? One of them was bad. They're like, we got to take that out. And then if we don't take the other two out, They'll your whole lonely. mouth will get. <laughs> They'll be sad. They'll be upset. Yeah. He's like, you just got to get them all out. They're going to so. wake up and be like, Johnny, <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> Johnny. <laughs> and John? he's gone. Yeah. Are you, hello? <laughs> you over there? Where'd you go? <laughs> because I just woke up. And... <laughs> he's my best friend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have yours out? Yeah. Yeah. When did you, four removed. When? Uh, 15 years 50, ago. Oh. <laughs> uh, I was a little bummed. Yeah, I was expecting some like hijinks when I got out of the anesthesia. Yeah. yeah. Every other person I've interacted with when they got their wisdom teeth taken out, they were like doing funny stuff. They were loopy. Yeah. I was like right back in it. Right. Yeah. It was kind of a bummer. Like you were completely out? Yeah. I was completely coherent as soon as I woke no, up. No, I mean, but you were... You were completely knocked out. Yeah, it worked. The anesthesia worked, but I there was no period where I was like loopy or fun or anything. I was just. I was just asking because some people just aren't completely out. There's a couple ways you can do it. I think. Oh, they knocked me out cold for sure. I was too, and I freaked out. Really? <laughs> it was my first time to ever be under anesthesia. Yeah, and uh, I was so nervous about it. I was about to have a panic attack, and then the dentist, like they're hooking me up to an IV and. He said this to make me feel better, but it made me freak out more. He goes, I'm freaking out. He goes, don't worry. In about 10 seconds, you're not going to know anything. But that made me freak out even more <laughs> yeah. for about 10 seconds, and then yeah. I was out. And when you woke up, you were fine? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I'm kind of nervous about it, too, because I, I don't – it's like the idea of no control. Like Absolutely. That's what yeah, it is. That's, and, uh, I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. Like, I, Can you take some – like, or they, they ease you into it? Like. I would recommend it. They just think it's such an easy procedure that they're like, you don't need anything. Yeah. I would have taken I would, I would I Mentally, I'm going to be – It's and I'm most scared about that. I was the same way. The last thing I remember, I'm laying in the thing, and they're like, all right, they hooked me up to an IV. 
And then, and then they just start talking about their weekends. So did you go to the pumpkin patch last week? And then I'm just out. So yeah. it's so casual for them. They yeah, do this I a would, million times. You would hope that they would talk about something smart. <laughs> you know? Like the last thing you hear, you don't know, I ran out of gas this morning. Basically. And then you're like, oh, gosh. Well, this is what happened. You'd hope they would, you know, be like, uh, here, we're going to read the encyclopedia before <laughs> yeah. we get started. You'd be like, oh, wow, some professional guys here. And it goes... You know, I got a flat tire. <laughs> You're talking about pumpkin. <laughs> I'm so hungover. Yeah. What a weekend. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, I don't even know where I'm at. I do not feel like doing this. <laughs> and then you are just And then you go. That would be, that's what I don't want. I'm nervous. I'm nervous about that going under. And then uh, I hope I'm up and at him. Right? At Harper wants to just come feel me when I'm like. See, that's what I was hoping I'd at least do mm, something fun. Yeah, but I it was I still had to get pushed out in a wheelchair, which is pretty nice. Yeah, did you asked to drive home. You go, I'll take it from here. <laughs> I did. I was like, I don't need the wheelchair. I'm fine. They're like, no, you legally can't. Yeah, and, I, yeah. and Lucy drove me. I would yeah. have rather have driven. <laughs> would have been a, yeah. <laughs> would have been a less stressful drive for sure. Well, didn't she used to have a joke about when she had hers done? Oh yeah, when I went, this is when we were dating. Yeah, and I was her chaperone. I had to go pick her up. And she woke up and she was so loopy that she she couldn't remember my name to tell. So she just goes, he's a big fat guy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the nurse comes out and like, I mean, knows it's me immediately. Yeah. And walks up and goes, hey, your girlfriend's back there. And then the nurse told me that as I'm walking back. She's like, yeah, she just said you're a big fat guy out there. So I knew it was you. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, start with you guys' comments. Uh, first up, uh, Lindsay Fletcher. Hey, Bear. I have never been so grateful that my baby woke up at 3 a.m. until I saw Brian dressed up as Dusty. Yeah, people loved it. A lot of people, uh, everyone agreed with you about Gar- I look like Gars yeah. from Wayne's World. A lot of people said I look like um, the woman from The Incredibles, Edna. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. They were, um, there she is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Edna Mode? Yeah. So, yeah, but people that's liked good. it. Yeah. Uh, Krista Wilson. Uh, Aaron, while I, do wa- while I do love watching them give you a hard time, I thought you looked confident and pretty darn handsome in that interview. Hey, thank you very much. Wow. That's Appreciate good. that, dude. Yeah. And Brian dug up some old uh, Nate oh, Bargatze yeah. interviews from back in the day. <laughs> I could not wait to get home to do yeah. that research. I I said I probably do have you some. did you did yeah. cover yourself. Yeah, did it? Well, did the one with the shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that wasn't really a Lion King shirt, was it? It was a. It's a Nashville Zoo shirt. shirt. Oh, okay, a lot of people. It said- was. I went through a Nashville Zoo phase, <laughs> uh, but I liked the Nashville Zoo phase. It's. I still like the Nashville Zoo, but it was. Uh, <laughs> yeah it's you can't see it yeah a little bit, a little bit leaning back, yeah. forward not not quite as confident not as confident back then. back then no i was in your same shoes of uh <laughs> well i watched that whole interview know. and found the least confidence pose i could find yeah well it was <laughs> yeah i was definitely not i mean short sleeves are insane to wear on tv that was a huge mistake uh I mean, they got to put that mic. It just looks like it's just taped on. You don't even, there's no hiding it. It looks like, you know, someone's getting interviewed by, just saw a UFO and they're like, just whatever. Get them strapped up. And uh, so a tornado came through your town. I go, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yep. <laughs> right when the, you know, right before you go under wisdom team. <laughs> and that photo of the kids dressed up as us, that was, oh, it was so That cool. was great. That yeah. was amazing. I saw mm-hmm. that up there too. Yeah, he'll get into it at some point. Uh, <laughs> I need to log into Instagram to look at yeah. all this stuff. We'll do it. Alex Hutchins, Hutchkins, Hutch, Hutchings. Let's be real here. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth head on the horror Mount Rushmore is Chucky. That's a fair one. I mean, a fair we one. mentioned Chucky a little bit. Yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. You might. What if you just put Dracula? Well, there's another one on here that. Oh, I think it says that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, John Whipple. The Mount Rushmore of horror is clearly Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, and Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm. Maybe you could replace Leatherface with Pinhead from the original Hellraiser. Anything else is millennial or Gen Z silliness. Whoa. Yeah. Came out hard. Came out. (laughs) 
I, I like it. <laughs> I think I like you just being in with your group. Yeah. I think I like that. And I mean, I, look, I hope Gen Z, Millennial and Gen Zs are the same thing. Just stick with what you're, and you yeah, stick with it. You go, you're ridiculous. Anything else is boomer nonsense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then they do the same thing, and we just keep this cycle going. It's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, Tom Jobson. Uh, Tom Jobson. I think I was going to say Jacobson. I bet people say that to him. Tom Jacobson. And then he goes, no, just Jobson. And they go, all right. Was Tom Jobson the one that came to your both shows? I don't know. I think that's, I think that's him. I think he did a two third oh or, or okay. half of the oh, band cool. yeah, yeah. yeah you would know yeah uh <laughs> she saw his id <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he was a man more of my age yeah oh, okay yeah uh dracula frankenstein the mummy phantom of the opera or the mount rushmore these fellows were the inspiration for every character who scared the hot water out of the audience yeah. Yeah, I can tell I, Tom's your age based on those those, those suggestions. Those suggestions and scared the hot water out of the audience. <laughs> it's a clean podcast. Uh, oh man, yeah. Tom's favorite comic is Charlie Chaplin. Too, yeah, based on did uh, <laughs> that that would be true. That I I don't know about fan of opera. Like, yeah. I would never fan of the opera. Singing. But <laughs> I could see you'd have Dracula, Frankenstein, the Mummy. So I guess it's two different. That's the thing, because you would be Dracula, Frankenstein, the Mummy, but that's just three. I, fan of the opera, I don't. I, I, that I doesn't make. I don't really. That make mask sense. is iconic. That half the mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm trying to think of a fourth one from that. Gener- the Invisible Man. <laughs> yeah, maybe yeah. just blank. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just a blank. They just chisel that one off, and <laughs> yeah. Fan of the opera. I mean, Tom. It's a, it's an old money suggestion right there. <laughs> Throw that in there. There you go. He's like Dracula, Frankenstein, the Mummy. That's what the, all the nannies watched. Uh, <laughs> fan of the opera. That's where I went to the opera, uh, and I watched it at the Mount Rushmore. He watched Fan of the Opera at the Mount Rushmore. Estella Otero, Otero. There's a whole documentary about Robert the Doll. Apparently, if you don't introduce yourself when you visit his home museum, he'll haunt you even when you're not in the museum anymore. There's a lot of people who send him letters apologizing to him, so he will stop haunting them. There's also quite a few deaths that have been pinned on him. Quite interesting to think about. Hmm. <laughs> interesting. I would, I'd watch that. I would not go to that museum. Scarier yeah, yeah. looking than Chucky, I think. Yeah. Something Robert about a Dull. featureless yeah. face. Mm-hmm. The fewer the features, the scarier There's a it documentary is. about it. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's called The Story of Robert the Doll. Let's see how that goes. Uh, Chad Prock. I went to the, the Robert the Doll Museum with some buddies. After all the warnings posted about not taunting Robert the Doll, I goaded my best friend into taunting the doll. He took a picture without permission, and long story short, develops Bell's palsy a week later. That's, is that real? <laughs> I mean, I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. I he was didn't send a, us the mm, picture, but. No. But he did, yeah. I think there was more to it. He said his buddies now recovered and says it was just a coincidence, but they feel like Robert did it to him. Well, I mean, that's yeah, that's that's the stuff that's like weird, yeah. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it could be, yeah, you know, it depends on what you, uh, but that is crazy. Well, wow, I'm glad he's recovering. <laughs> Imagine how mad you'd be, you just have Bell's palsy, and you're just like, hey. How'd you get it, Robert? Because my dead gum friends <laughs> made me taunt this doll. <laughs> What'd you do? He goes, I was doing like, you know. Stuck my tongue out at <laughs> like just it's not even that good of stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, then he goes, I don't know. He goes, I turn my back to it. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Joe Leonard, when it comes to the missing feet washing up the shore, look into the missing 411 phenomenon. There's a bunch of strange disappearances in North America wilderness areas and national parks. Some of the people are found miles away from there. They disappeared, and they are often missing their feet with no clear cause of death. It is often speculated to be paranormal somehow, and others even believe it to have a connection to UFOs. Yeah. That's uh, Ab- Abigail gave me these books. Missing oh, 411? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah, she, like, watches, like, or she did something. I don't, you know. Uh, they haven't been opened. <laughs> I think Bigfoot. Is but I would like to read. Like it's like stuff that I think I would find right. fun. This is often the Pacific Northwest. They think maybe Bigfoot has something to do with mm. these people missing. Oh yeah, takes everything but the feet. Mm. Yeah, He's not a f- okay. foot guy. All right, Mary Lancaster. 
Uh, I feel like I know Mary. I don't. I, that name sounds like you'd be Mary Lancaster. Yeah, seems like it, that's a good name that you you would if you were like you're about to meet Mary Lancaster, you'd feel comfort. Mm-hmm. You'd be like, oh, that's it's going to mm-hmm. be a pleasant experience. Mary Lancaster. Lancaster, like the city. Yeah, well, I've heard now, it both I ways. Pronounced it, and she hits me, and I'm like, well, Mary, this is un. <laughs> what are you doing, Mary? <laughs> Mary. I'm a language arts and social studies teacher in Westfield, Indiana. Our upcoming language arts unit gives students the choice of reading about high interest topics, and the Bermuda Triangle is one of the choices. My sixth grader chose the Bermuda Triangle last year and became obsessed. So, yes, some kids still learn about it. That's good to know. It's good to know. Passing it on. Passing it on. They should be scared of it like we were. Your generation missed it, but now it's coming back around. But yeah, well, you guys grew up in La La Land, you know? <laughs> we had real stuff going on in the world. That was the point I was trying to make, yeah. is I that we it. lost our innocence way too young. Yes. You know? Y'all were thrown and, right into it. You right. didn't have time for starting, trivial things. Like, exactly yeah. right. And you're seeing the effects of it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, we, we never well, had a child. the anxiety child. y'all have. I mean, my generation was thrown into a war. But yeah, I'm sure big groups are tough for you guys. And, uh, you know, it's a hard big time. <laughs> VE Wing 08. V Wing 08. I like how Nate talked about dumping his trash in the ocean. He shakes the bag out as if it's fine to dump trash in the ocean. <laughs> But you need to reuse the garbage bag. Right. <laughs> you know, you got to be, I like the idea Frugal. of uh, you're doing something. Yeah. You go, look, I, I get dumping this trash in this garbage bag is in the ocean is bad. But I'll at least, at least when people confront me about it, I go, hey, I bring the bag back. Right, yeah. right, I'm yeah. reusing my bag. Yeah. You guys are just launching bags out there. I'm doing something. And they'd be, we'd rather you just keep it in the bag for the animals. So it doesn't disperse everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're part of the problem is the reason why you got trash that we can't <laughs> like get into a, a thing. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, Josh Gaines. Not sure why it bothered me, but Aaron got the end of Family Man wrong. But I won't spoil the actual ending, so feel free to keep it on your list right after Shawshank Redemption. I don't know what I got wrong. In fact, I'm pretty sure I did not get it wrong. Okay. I mean, I left out some details. Yeah. I watched the ending last night. Yeah. I think you just maybe chose not to get into the weeds of it. Right. Just the broad strokes. Right. And I want to spoil it for Nate, yeah. who's going to watch it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Once he finishes those 411 books, and then he watches Shawshank mm-hmm. Redemption, he'll get around to family, man. Yeah. Last night, I watched The Ledge, and it's about... Uh, these two girls go <laughs> on a ledge. On a ledge. <laughs> Hot tub time machine. I'm just going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a ledge involved, and it's in the movie for almost the whole time. <laughs> and uh, so these two girls climb. They were going to go climb, and this other guy uh, kills one of them, and then the other one gets stuck on a ledge. And that's uh, the gist. <laughs> the gist of it. Pretty intense, uh, but... Yeah, that's what I was doing. I did watch Downfall. Oh, yeah? That's something. What's that? It's a movie about Hitler. But the guy that – it's Hitler's uh, like last – I forget, oh, like yeah. I want to say it was like the last 24 hours or 48 hours. Mm. And it's pretty – it's unreal. The guy that plays him is is, is, cr- is crazy good. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I think I can get into that. Like I think it's like I either want like a The Ledge or this kind of movie or it's like I can – if someone's so great of an actor – that you're just like, I can just stare at you yeah. all day. And like that's what, like when there will be blood. Like when I never watched that, you told me to watch it. And you watch it. And then Daniel Day-Lewis, you're like, you're so good. Yeah, it's like transcendent. Yeah, yeah. you're you're like, I can't believe, I love your little, every the way you sit, the way you, yeah. you're, you're just like, oh my gosh. So that's what I thought with this. This guy, and I mean, it's just so crazy. If you haven't seen Downfall, you've probably seen the meme. Do you remember yeah. the old meme of people would put fake subtitles over yes. that one scene where he's confronting all his yeah. Like, oh, yeah, officers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. one of the original memes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very funny. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, Downfall was, uh, it's just, yeah. It's, now, you've mentioned There Will Be Blood numerous times, and people pointed out you don't like, uh, not character actors, but uh, I'm losing the, what's the, when you're in the role? Uh, oh, method actors. Method actors. Yeah. But he's the ultimate method actor. No, I think I said uh, 
I don't think I'm mind method actors. I'm saying you should have to stay in a fenced area and not <laughs> oh, right. be allowed to mix with the other okay. people. So I think I want you to be a method actor, yeah, but I'm saying they should lock you up. Put you in a cage. Put yeah. you in a cage and you shouldn't be allowed to go like, you know, like a guy that's just like putting the craft services out shouldn't have to deal with a multimillionaire that's like, we really want to talk to him in gibberish. Like, I don't think that guy should have to do that. Yeah. Or he should get paid more to deal with the lunatic. Right, right. So it's like, go be a method actor, but go be, you should be locked in a thing. Or no, or, or or you just be like, no one talk to me. I just would like want some. I just even if you want to do it, I would just say like, just go meet everybody regular before, mm. and just say, how you doing, everybody? Or give a speech and say, I love you all. I'm not trying to be. I I think I can get the best performance out of this for all of us making this. Uh, I'm gonna just kind of stay in the mind frame of Frankenstein <laughs> this whole time. Yeah. So I'm gonna probably eat alone. <laughs> I'm gonna do a lot of things. But like you know, I don't know. Just make it where have have show some uh, as a regular person. Just mm-hmm. show some niceness. Yeah. So this guy from Downfall shouldn't be Hitler to the whole crew. <laughs> yeah, he can't. Well, what's crazy is like you when you watch it. It's like I mean, it, it's uh, it's it's so interesting to see. Like they play these parts of like well, he is like you know in the character like people the lady they interviewed they were like it was at the end that was I, I think who did it like you know she talks about like you know none of them knew what they're doing it's it was like none of them uh you know if they were if you were in close to the circles that i don't think you knew you know i mean i think they're like they think they knew something but they were so young like a lot of them are kids and like you just can't wrap your head around what's happening and you don't know you know but then they would meet him and she was like he would be very sweet to like the people in him and then he would also say stuff that you're like what yeah. i watched the whole thing on how he like rose like it's crazy that dude came from uh nothing like he doesn't you know you almost would think he comes from like some rich family mm-hmm. or blah blah whatever this is a dude that just came uh from nothing and then just like, yeah, how could you even get something like this right, going? Right. Like, you're. It's a feel good story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just, it's just, it's interesting to like, it's just so wild to like be like, how could you get all these people like to believe into what you want to believe? And you, you have to be, uh, I mean, I don't know. You just have it to to do it to get to that level of things. And then even at that this point in the movie, so like, no one's agreeing with him, but no one's going to. You know, they're like, we need to stop doing this. It's over. And he wouldn't. And like, no one's, everybody's, everybody knows he's uh, like, it's like, it's over, dude. Like, yeah, and yeah. he keeps like sending them out and he's still like, you know, people are just dying and like, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, are the Germans, you know, and they're just getting taken over. I mean, it's, yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, I don't know. That, and the guy that played him is unreal. I mean, and be able to play that character. I mean, that's just, you know, that guy's a. <laughs> A good segue into our art discussion, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Failed artist Hitler. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he was into that, like, he was like an art, he wanted to be go to art school and all this kind of, like, it's just this weird kind of thing. Uh, all right, Aaron Schill. I like that guy. one guy's got to follow that. <laughs> Aaron Aaron Schill's like, I'm good, dude. Just don't read my part. I'm like, no, 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 Aaron. We're going to get to you. Uh, no, I purposely put this. I want this one read. Uh, I was part of the audience in Provo that failed to give Brian a standing ovation. <laughs> Trust me. He was very funny and deserving. We'll carry that guilt for at least a little while, hopefully not too long. <laughs> that's a shill. I think he's being a shill for you. <laughs> Is that, <laughs> I think that's that what right. that means? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. I didn't know how to use yeah, that. Yeah. Aaron Nailed Shill. It. Yeah. <laughs> well, two on the nose, Aaron. <laughs> it's probably not his real name. Yeah. What does shill mean? It means. A I think you just kind of, yeah. like, it's someone that just, Goes along with you, like Hitler's guys were shills. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, so Aaron is your, yeah. Uh, right? Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's just, we'll just keep tying everything back to Hitler. <laughs> uh, yeah, it all goes back to, yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. Insane. Uh, go watch that Downfall movie. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very good. interesting. The very, last, very good. Like, I'm going to, and I'm trying to watch The Darkest Hour next because then that's, uh, what's his face? I don't Winston know. Churchill, maybe. Mm-hmm. Oh, I saw uh, that. That was a few years ago. Yeah, 
And that's almost like it's funny to, it, like to watch the downfall, which is those last 40 years. And then the Winston Churchill is like the other side's last. Yeah. Like, so you get to see uh, both. And those are both serious movies. So I'm, I've got them. I had to throw a ledge in the middle. <laughs> yeah. I can't yeah, handle yeah. too much. Yeah. But we'll get to this eventually. Uh, I'm going to learn all about history. I, that's what I want to learn. I don't know. I'm an idiot. It's unreal. Yeah. I just don't remember school. It's why did I even go? Well, school is a long time ago for you now, man. But you I would mean, think I could get through. I mean, I'm watching this stuff. You could spoil a World War II yeah, movie like, for me. Who, who won the war? <laughs> don't tell me. You could. It's unreal yeah. that you could just. I can watch something and I'm like, golly, dude, are you kidding me? Like. You, you know, it's great. <laughs> Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, it's beautiful. Why would yeah. anyone complain yeah. about being here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are those There's, planes in the sky? <laughs> yeah. I feel like that could maybe be a joke. So that's fun. Just, I'm yeah. going to write that down. It's really fun. And then that's fun. We'll see what happens. All right, guys. Big Titans win this weekend. I got my Titan shirt on. Mm. We're five and two, rolling, doing good. It's a perfect time to play prize picks. Derrick Henry had over 200 yards rushing. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, this weekend. So will he do it again? Well, go to Prize Picks and you can enter. That's the way to do it. Find out if he'll it'll be more or less. That's the way to do it. Uh, they got a big game coming up this week against the Chiefs. So go in there. You can pick two to five players, and they'll and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projections, you can win up to ten times your money on any entry. First time users can receive a hundred percent instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars with promo code Nate. If you deposit one hundred dollars. Price picks will give you one hundred dollars if you deposit deposit fifty dollars. Price picks will give you fifty. Don't forget to enter promo code Nate at sign up for an instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Also, uh, weather is perfect. We're almost into big man weather. Yeah, <laughs> close. I can't wait, dude. Yeah, we're there. We're right on the verge. Uh, it's perfect weather to go outside and enjoy your solo stove. Take it camping to the lake, uh, your neighbor's over for s'mores, uh, you know, uh, you know, get outside and you get this perfect solar stove. It's the best fire pit uh, I have ever seen. Uh, like we said, you don't smell like campfire. I mean, that's, it's magic. It's the, that's, that's their main thing. They need to just say, you don't smell like campfire. You right. get a fire without smelling like a fire. <laughs> And that's the main thing that you need to worry about. It's a very easy setup because uh, there's zero setup. Just unbox and enjoy a little fire starter wood, and you can have a nice fire quickly. We have the bonfire version with the stand. It burns down to white ash, so cleanup is super easy for Laura. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> upgrade your backyard with a solo stove fire pit. Prepare for your best outdoor memories yet and save big during the solo stove fall event plus use promo code nate at solostove.com for an extra ten dollars off that is solostove.com promo code nate for ten dollars off on top of all of on top of the fall event deals hurry the fall event ends november 10th so get to it all right everybody we are here with kevin nealon kevin got a new book i exaggerate my brushes with, I said frame when I first did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> my brushes with fame. Uh, this is a great book idea. Like it's, it's. we talked about it before you got here. It's like uh, you paint a portrait of the uh, Caricature. celebrity character. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know anything about art. Is there a difference between a portrait and a character? Yeah, portrait is um, the actual look of the person. Uh, caricature oh. is an exaggeration. Oh. It's like, um, yeah, it's like um, just stretching out. Like if they have a big nose, you would make it a bigger nose. Yeah. So like I would be, at a fi- if I was in this book, I would have been offended because I would have called this a portrait. And I'm like, is this what you yeah. think? <laughs> I know, where do you get off? <laughs> I know, dude? man. Do you, have you ever had a, a character done of you? Uh, I think uh, like once at like a, you know, like a fair, like six flags or something yeah. like something like that i've never had like or yeah. i guess people fans have done some stuff i don't know if they've done a character maybe i don't know oh they probably have yeah, I, I think they, I, yeah i i did one of eddie vetter oh yeah and he loved it it's in the book and he's friends with my manager and he told him he says you know i get tons of like pictures from fans but i really love this one is like the best I said, well, it's five hundred dollars, man. Yeah, <laughs> Venmo. Uh, yeah. I so I met him this weekend. Did you really? This was wow. so the sh- thing that I did this weekend. It was for I got who uh, uh, who cares T 
Teen Cancer America and UCLA Health. And so they donated, uh, they raised a lot of money for that. It's a, uh, it's this big party. Uh, Sandler has talked about it on Stern where it's like, they're have a, they have this, the concert is nuts. It was, uh, I, me doing comedy at the top to people standing up outside was just the people up front were very nice, but you know, it's just, no one's listening. Yeah, it's right. like when you go up there and people could not know you're I'm there. so used to that. Man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it just, when you get, it reminded me of when you start and you're just yeah. doing shows and you're like, people don't. They're like, I don't, you know, were you up there? And you're like, and I was doing my act. And then you're, which always feels weird when you're really like in your jokes. And you're like, dude, nobody. How much time? By the way. 20. Incidentally, I found out a way to get people to listen from doing a corporate gig. Some guy told me, he says, what you do is if they're not listening, you start a prayer. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and you're not too loud he's saying yeah. oh heavenly father I, you know and everyone's oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? that's a pretty that. good way yeah. to do it yeah. yeah i like that well this book is not just caricatures it's also anecdotes that go with each um uh caricature about yeah. the experience i've had with that person it's it's kind of an autobiography that yeah. i've written because <clears throat> these are the people i've met along the way and how um they've either influenced me or um, we had a relationship together from Farley, Chris Farley, to um, – and if I don't know the people and they're like Freddie Mercury, yeah, I just muse about being in garage bands or going to my first concert. What was your first concert? Uh, Michael W. Smith. It's a Christian artist. Okay. He was okay. here at Starwood. Yeah. Uh, yeah we, when I grew up, I was – I don't know nothing about – I know nothing about music. Uh, I'm not like a – You can't – can you whistle? Uh, ugh, no, no, we covered can that you, a couple we weeks ago. Yeah. Can you hum? It's, uh, I can hum, oh, but for it's, you. it's, uh, I don't never know. So like the thing we went to this weekend, we met Eddie, like the, the, it was green day, Eddie Vedder. Uh, he came out with the who Billy Idol, John Fogarty. Wow. Uh, and then I mean, I did comedy. I'm talking, <laughs> my name is on the painting. With That's all, scary. Well, like there's a, a character right behind you. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just noticed yeah. as you were saying yeah. that people yeah. were looking at it over yeah. your shoulder. Kevin, ba- I do like that one. Yeah, yeah, it's good. That Yellow nice. works. Uh, and so the like when we were like I met Roger Daughtry, and uh, but right. I and it's I'm ignorant to it. It's not right. And like so I'm meeting him. I'm like, hey, thanks for having me. Like I almost yeah, like, like he like fan. runs the. <laughs> a, a, you're, like, not, you're not really thing. a fan. Yeah, okay. yeah in just, fact, you dislike him. Yeah, he's like just talking. You're like that guy was like whatever, and then no, and then Laura's like that guy's like responsible for music, and yeah. you're like oh, you're Roger like, Daltrey. I, I don't know, just yeah, something. He's important. I'm not saying he's responsible for music. <laughs> I don't know what he, but he was. Isn't a, he like uh, who? Yeah, he is the yeah, he's yeah. the lead, he singer. The lead, lead singer. singer of the Who. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't know anything about music. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Do you know? I know their songs. When Do you they know sing. who sang Imagine? Who created that show? No. Wow. You've been Ma- no, wait, Beatles? John Lennon. John Lennon. Yeah. yeah. I do what, know that. Who who do you know the best music wise? Uh the monkeys. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I did listen to the Daydream monkeys. Believer. Yeah. I love the monkeys. Yeah. I met um <clears throat> which one is he? Um not Michael Nesmith or Davy Jones. Mickey Dolans. Oh yeah. I met him at a fundraiser once. And uh he's still out there touring. Yeah. I would have loved to meet them. They, I've seen them like you know, go, when you go on tour, you see everybody's like yeah, yeah, who's coming and stuff. Yeah. And then there, you could see them coming. And uh, the one uh, died, like the main one, just Michael died. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I would have loved to meet him. Yeah. Uh, Tell the story but, about meeting James Taylor. Oh yeah, James is in the book too. Um, I loved James Taylor. He's a kind of a country folk singer. Yeah, guy. I do know who he is. Oh, you do? <laughs> I don't know if I know what he. Yeah. Welcome to our planet, man. Yeah. I know. How's he doing? How's it going for him? It's going really well. Oh. I'll tell him you're asking yeah. about him. Yeah. So James Taylor is a guy that I grew up with, and I play the guitar, and I loved his style. It's finger picking, and I used to try to learn his songs on. Um, they call them a record back then, an LP. And they would go on a, a turntable, and you have to put the needle down on the right groove. <laughs> you really don't know, do you? No, I did. I had you a record player. Too? Yeah, no, I had uh, Elvira yeah. record and okay. uh, one Michael Jackson record. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. Good start. Yeah. Are you saying the Oak Ridge Boys or Mistress of the Dark? I had Oak Ridge Boys. Yeah, okay. but I, it was just Elvira. Yeah, right. It was just that one song. Yeah. So you don't go around the house humming something annoying to your wife ever. No, no, I don't. I can listen to a song. I don't even know what it's about. Yeah, yeah. It's, it. Nate says on this podcast a lot that he never listens to words and music. Right. So right. he has no idea what any songs are about. It's I'm all, sort of like that too. I, I, 
I, I'm I, like a dog that they just put, like a plant. And you just yeah. play it so it grows better. <laughs> so James Taylor um, is um, James Taylor uh, is a guy that I was a huge fan of, and I was so intimidated by him. And I, you know, I went to tons of his concerts, and and I I never knew him, and I almost didn't want to know him because, you know, it's like Sarah Silverman says, you know, be careful when you meet your idol. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, so. Um, when he was on SNL, I got to meet him and we kind of became buddies, you know, we're standing by the craft service table and I was, I was, um, um, mentioning the donuts to him. I said, you should try the, um, the glazed donuts are really good. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll have to give it a shot. You know, so we talked for a while and I was asking him, no, James, when you make that, you know, cord in copper line, do you use your pinky to reach down there? Said, yeah, I do. I said, oh, I was afraid of that. Yeah, because that's a hard cord. You know? <laughs> but anyway, at the end of the craft service thing, you know, we're finished eating our donuts. He goes, yeah, I, I, I'd really like to get together with you sometime. You know, I say that a lot, but I, I, I really mean it. So we exchanged numbers. And about a week later, I call him and we arrange for uh, a dinner. So I go to his apartment in New York. I go up, it's got the elevator that opens up into your apartment, you know, one of those nice places. And, and so we go out to this Cuban restaurant because he likes the Cuban restaurant. I hate Cuban food. It makes me sweat. You know, it's really, I don't like it at all. But I said, yeah, that's a good choice. Let's go there. You know, and we, I don't remember what we talked about, but on the way home, it was like a date. I'm thinking, God, no, what do I do? Do I hug him? Do I kiss him? Yeah. Do I walk him up to the apartment? Yeah. You know, do I ask for another date? Yeah, yeah. But um, I think we just hugged and, and uh, that 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 was, it. and then he had me like um, he had me f film a. Uh, they were getting ready to do a tour or album, so I went out to Martha's Vineyard and I videotaped them rehearsing, and interviewed his mother and his yeah. brothers, and and then I did hosted some show for him. And but I haven't seen him like in eight years now. Yeah, uh, here's the problem: I introduced my friend to him, who was a bigger fan than I was, and he glommed on to him, mm -hmm. uh. and he stays at his house now when he's in L.A. And I don't even, I haven't even talked to him in a long time. So, yeah, be careful who you introduce your yeah. idol to. He took him away from you. He took him away. He says yeah. he's like his surrogate father now. Yeah. I'm like, Jesus. Yeah. I was just a fan. Yeah. 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 It's like, that is, you got to, when you eat, introduce like your buddies to someone. And then, you know, sometimes you got to be like, hey, be normal. Yeah. Because they're, they're going to act crazy or they're like, I know, but I'm a big fan. You're like, I know, mm -hmm. but you can't, like, let's just hang out. Yeah, yeah. And don't be insane. I know, don't go crazy. Yeah. And now now he's at the point where um I say, Hey, hey Dave, is um is James um gonna be playing at the amphitheater this this year? No, we decided that um <laughs> you know, all of a sudden it's we. <laughs> so what do you mean we? <laughs> and you're like, Can I get tickets? We got a we got a big guest we, list. We got yeah. <laughs> like uh, it's yeah, we we've decided that um James is not gonna tour this year because of COVID. Uh, and when did all of you guys decide that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're just reading the data. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> just, but it is like those people that are big fans of baseball teams. Well, we won last year yeah you know yeah. but i don't think we're gonna get into the you know what, what position do you play <laughs> yeah yeah i always i say we i'm a we person are you, are you oh yeah <laughs> i'll do it i'm like uh you just just you're just talking and then but yeah people do say it. they have no responsibility as i gotten older i think because the as the players get younger yeah they do. and then you just are like so much i'm 43 so then you're just like oh man i'm older than these these are kids but what about college like you played at sacred heart right uh, I played at Fairfield University football, but I did play at Sacred Heart soccer. Okay, so you could say we for them, right? Um, yeah, we did play there. Yeah, we we played. Not you though. Well, I know, but yeah. <laughs> but if you give money to that school, or in your case, you actually played there, you could still say we now, correct? Uh, I could, I guess. <clears throat> but uh, you know, I played football at Fairfield University because I never played football in high school, really, or college. And I always wanted to play football because we played Sandlot uh, football games that were in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And we had the helmets and the pads. And we played these, like this gang from across town at the football field on Sundays when nobody was playing, no refs. So it was like brutal. And I had a good arm. And so my buddy, um, Bill, says, hey, we can go out for Fairfield University, University's football team if we take three credits at night. That'll make us eligible. So I took a, uh, we both took a course in um, criminology. We went like three times, and we played the whole season. The quarterback got hurt, so I got to play the whole year. <laughs> he won. Uh, he won all American. I got MVP, and it was crazy, man. I, and I, I took. A, I was kicker too because they didn't have a really good team. <laughs> I was a kicker and punter, and then we come back the next year to play again. And by now, you know, we're out of college now. 
We're like 35. <laughs> no. <laughs> we, you know, we're like, Your second year in SNL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're like 21 or something. Uh, no, no, we're like 19 or whatever. I don't know what we were, but it was right <laughs> after college. And uh, it was probably, we were probably like <laughs> two hours later. No, maybe we were 17. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I think I was. So, um, so anyway, um, we go back to play another year, the next year. And the coach goes, guys, I'm sorry, man. You're going to have 12 credits now. <laughs> Yeah. And we realized that one of the players probably ratted us out because he wasn't getting to play. Yeah. And uh, so then I moved to LA thinking I could try out for kicker on the LA Express. They had the USFL football team then. <laughs> and uh, and I had good hang time, you know, with the football. And I yeah. could hit field goals too. And uh, But I figured it'd be a good, like, uh, hook for my stand-up comedy because I was trying out for both. Yeah. Not only is a comedian, but he's the kicker yeah, for, for the me. LA Express. I'll break up to the stage. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> yeah. Don't you hate one of these these sound guys? I don't know if you get it anymore, but these guys that run the audio, like what song do you want to come up to? Yeah. Okay, great. And then you, you're about to come on, and you and I both have kind of a laid back act. Yeah. Give it up for Nate Bacazzi. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. The energy is, you have to fix, you have, you have to fix it almost when you go out. Yeah. When they do it like that, because they're uh, they'd always say like people would bring them. They if you don't give him good energy, he's the energy is not going to be good. Like and they're doing <laughs> yeah. this, and you're like, my energy is not going to be good. <laughs> so Either it doesn't way. matter what your energy is. Mine is this. Yeah. So this is it, man. I'm excited right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say something like that usually. I go up, you just say something like that. Uh, yeah. Uh, my other one, I found a good line when you follow someone famous, like you know. Is I'd all just go up and be like, well, the show's obviously peaked, so let's just get through it. And it was enough to just reset the tone and very quickly, and then you could just get into your act. Yeah, yeah. But you you find when you're low energy, you got to find little things because you're following different acts, especially you're doing spots. Well, here's what I did, Nate. I like completely shut all that out. They say, well, how do you want to be introduced? I don't. I know. I'm just gonna walk out. No music. No introduction. You know, and no MC. <laughs> yeah. I'm just coming out because that's jazzy. Yeah. You know, it is jazzy. Yeah. Until I realize that people don't recognize me anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, you talk about openers and all that. Um, when I was on SNL doing Weekend Update, Adam Sandler would come on a lot and do his little feature things, Red Hooded Sweatshirt and whatnot. And we booked a gig together before he was popular from a year down the road to a year down the road at some college, Syracuse. And by the time that year rolled around, that gig rolled around, Sandler was really popular and huge now. And he's opening for me. Oh. <laughs> he opens, he kills his college because they love him, you know. And then he leaves the stage and then I got to come out. <laughs> I think it was the first time I ever bombed. You know, I mean, people were leaving. You know, they saw who they wanted to see. And and, uh, and now I'm opening for him in a week or two. Out in, uh, in, uh, oh, coming up. Yeah. It's does that one did you think about switching like that? Uh, night? No, I didn't even know, you I didn't, didn't know how popular it. he was, yeah, yeah, because we're that's in a what's interesting because it's a you can, you can, uh, yeah, you don't like realize it, and then you get there and you're like, oh, oh, they like know you way more than I thought they did, yeah, yeah, and then you know, that is that's uh, that dynamic is well, it's fun, to, I mean, it's it's neat to see too because you're you're kind of seeing it in real time, uh. And it's, yeah, I, I'm trying to think if I've had uh, any. I remember opening for people that I wouldn't think they were big. And then you see their fans, you're like, oh, you're huge. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you think, like, I'm going to go out, I'm going to murder, and I'm going to, like, all this stuff. And then you do great. And then once you leave, I mean, you could go sit in the front row, they wouldn't remember you. <laughs> like, they don't I know, care. I know, I know. And you're like, oh, I thought. Well, let me ask you something, because you're working the big venues now. I'm going to do this thing with Sandler. I know he's going to have a big crowd. Do you play? I did open for Brad Paisley uh, in St. Louis about a year ago, and it was 10,000 people. Yeah. So I was a little great. nervous about that. But yeah. it, it almost like is the same as a club. It's from that the same. Thing. You know, the interesting thing with the big places, and I mean, the, the most I've done is like 6,000. Uh, but it's you're they usually have these video screens, which yeah, I think is right. a good benefit for us. Sure. 
And because uh, then people can kind of see your face even more. Because even in like a 2,000 seat place, it's hard for someone in the back to really see your face. But it's it's about the energy in the room. I think that's why you and people like it is you want to, you're like all a part of this and you're all laughing together and you're like, that's the experience. And when they can see the screens, they can see your face, but you just do you. Like, I mean, I've yeah. learned. You just, Don't try to reach out more than you. No, I bombed do. once doing that. On a, on a, I followed <laughs> Rory Scovel. Uh, and you guys remind me, uh, not not your material, but I called you once because Rory asked me to do his podcast. Do you remember that? Yeah. I said, hey, well, um, uh, when, when is the podcast? I'm, I'm confused. Uh, you were like, um... I don't. Did you talk to my people about it? Or I said, uh, I, I don't. I don't think. I thought you called me. It was really Rory. You know, oh, all the time. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yes, that was. <laughs> you were going to Rory's. I think yeah. it was that day, and you're like, hey. it was that morning, I think. Yeah, yeah, and you're like, where are you at? And I and I don't. I would never tell you to call my people, but it was. It was like someone like, did you like book this through someone else? Yeah, like, that's, it something? was something like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. I was like, I'll do it with <laughs> you right now, dude. I was like, let's. And just- then when I hung up, I thought, wait, Nate doesn't really know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the one that didn't know yeah. what's going on. I think you were in L.A. I was. Uh, yeah, uh, Rory was just here this weekend. This was he really? Oh, he's great. Yeah. He's great. But I've once followed him, and he, you know, his energy is very improv and very yeah. like. And I tried to match that because I thought that's what the room wanted, and I bombed. And it's because you were – and Jay Larson, who's after us, he's, he's like, just do you. Like, and it was like a moment of like, oh, yeah, you got to just – you got to bring them to you. And you can bomb that way because then it's like it is what it is. You did it your way. But yeah. it feels very awkward to bomb when you're not being – you're like out of your – Oh yeah, your character kind of thing. You don't start doing impressions when you've never done an impression. Oh before. yeah, like, let me give it a go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I better do impressions for this crowd. They'll like that. Then, yeah, <laughs> there. It's always interesting to see comics that you th- like. Do you ever think about like when you're in a you know like this weekend was it wasn't bad. They were it was an awesome event and it was very cool to be there. But it's like when everybody's talking and everybody's great, and then you're thinking like who would do good here? Like who would? Howie Mandel did the auction. Howie's I was just going to say good. Howie Mandel. Howie's someone that I think can do. Yeah, work, he can work do the anything, crowd. Any, yeah, yeah. But you would see comics be able to do that, where you're like, no matter what the situation, you're like, I think that comic could handle. I mean, anything that's thrown at them, they yeah. just are good at it. I used to watch Robin Williams. Like he was one oh, of the first yeah. comics I ever saw, and I almost turned around and went home because I thought, <laughs> oh my god, this this is crazy. But then I realized he can't be everywhere at once. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. There's other gigs. So. Yeah, but he would do good in a place like that. Oh. You know, he'd walk through the crowd and start, you know, picking people apart. You know, one of the I remember, where did you start at? LA. Yeah. And then uh was he already like on like was he It's right before Mork. Oh, really? And then I got a job bartending at the Improv and he would come in from taping Mork. This is back in the 1900s. <laughs> And he would mm-hmm. come come in from taping work. He still have the suspenders on, and that shirt. And he come into the improv. He go through the kitchen and go on stage. And that room was always packed. It was a lot of like expats from New York. And he would go on and he would kill. And I watched from the top. There's a little peephole in the in Bud's office. And I looked down. And I've seen everybody at Robin Williams, Andy Kaufman, Jay Leno at the time, um, Albert Brooks. <clears throat> yeah. It was just crazy. They would all do spots. Yeah, they come into a spot. It's uh to see them in that era, like those guys, because that's like Leno would. You'd always hear the stories about it. he would just murder. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just no one was like no one could do as good as him, and he was just his own uh, comic. I'm a giant Leno fan. Like Leno stayed. I like he he stayed true with stand up comedy. He still does it. He's like a night. He's a very sweet guy. Yeah. Uh, I, he called me after my special. He's like, "Oh, me and my wife watched it, and like, and he's that's just, nice. Very nice." And he talked about doing corporate gigs as clean guys. He always, he's like, "Is it? Is it like me, you, Kevin Nealon, Seinfeld, Regan?" He goes, yeah. "He goes, that's it. We're Dana Carvey. You know, because when we do these corporate events now, it's just you hear like last yeah, year we yeah. had, <laughs> and you're it's just, it's, there's six of us that they're they're right. having, and uh." It's he's just like a wonderful guy, and then just I mean, just a monster of a comedian. I gotta tell you, we worked uh, at a um, golf tournament, or he did. I had done it a couple years before, but I was in the golf tournament up in Lake Tahoe, and they asked me if I wanted to be on the show on the Tonight Show. I said, "Well, I got to go up to Lake Tahoe tonight because <clears throat> I got to, you know, playing in this tournament. I'm not a good golfer, by the way." And he goes, "Hey, you my show, and I'll take you up there. I'm flying up there tonight. You know, I'll go on my set." <laughs> 
And uh, I said, okay. And I don't know what kind of jet it is. It turned out to be a little Learjet. Yeah. And uh, he's got his garment thing. He's bringing on there. So we get on the jet. And as we get up uh, to like 10,000 or whatever it was, the pilot goes, you know, they got some uh, fires happening up in Tahoe. So we went to land in Reno. Like, nah, we're taking it. We're going to Tahoe. You know, we're gonna, we'll see how it is. You know? <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, no. We got to go. I said to myself, we got to go to Reno, man. I don't care. I'll drive up there for an hour and a half. And so we're flying. And he's in the back. And he's got his index cards on his chest you know, <laughs> yeah. for his like next show. And he looks like he's sleeping. And I smell smoke in the, in the uh, cabin of the plane. It's a little yeah. air jet. And, and I could tell it was smoke from fires. It wasn't the engine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I go up halfway up, and it's a small jet. I said, hey, guys, you know, if you think it's too dangerous to go into Tahoe, we'd go into Reno. And Jay in the back goes, no, 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 we're going into Tahoe. <laughs> we're going, yeah, it's my jet. We're going into Tahoe. Yeah. <laughs> so we went in through the smoke, man. We landed in a Tahoe. <laughs> it's crazy. It's man. crazy. It is. Uh I'm doing uh, Lake Tahoe uh, this year, that golf tournament. Oh, you are? Uh, really? Yeah, that and the Pebble. Oh, you must be a good uh, golfer. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm fine. Like yeah. it's, but uh, do you like those? Do you get, how did you, have you hit anybody? Like or? No, but I was golfing with uh, Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah, yeah. Dan, and he hit somebody hard, man. He was <laughs> he was just starting off. This is like second year. And he loaded. He came up with his camo shirt, sleeveless. You know, he's supposed to have the regular shirt. Yeah, yeah. And, but they let him play that way. And he, we were on the uh, 18th tee box. And he gets up there. And these people think you're professionals. They're all yeah. lining up, you know, like you're Tiger Woods or something along that side. And I'm telling people, you got to back up. You got, I am not a pro. I usually hit it over there. So back it up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to hit until you back up. So they go maybe this far. Yeah. He said, okay, okay. So Larry, the cable guy, gets up there, Dan Whitney. And he tees it up. And he hits it hard. And he shanks it. And it goes right into the crowd and hit a guy that was maybe 30 yards away from him. Luckily, the guy was on his phone. It hit the phone. It smashed the phone. The guy went down. (laughs) And Larry is just looking at him like, what what happened? And uh, and the guy is down on the ground. Everybody's around him. And he was out for maybe two minutes <laughs> and then he, he the phone was smashed that you know but so yet i heard somebody still on the phone hello are you still there are you there <laughs> and and uh they gave this guy um access to the vip room that night to meet everybody and, oh that's cool and the guy came back and he was just a real jerk oh he really an idiot. yeah they almost had to kick him out oh, wow. i said larry you should have hit him a little harder yeah <laughs> but you'll love it man yeah. I, I took me like three years to kind of lose to get my nerves because the cameras are there you're on camera all the time and i really am a back they put me with barkley every year yeah and i usually beat him he's usually at the bottom <clears throat> yeah That's but good. it's fun it's a lot of fun yeah, yeah i'm excited uh i did it for like 15 years yeah yeah, I was. Uh, I've been talking. Uh, uh, Ray Romano does it every year, and like yeah. I've talked, like, uh, and just like learning about like what to expect or what to do. I mean, it's going to be. It's a dream as a guy that loves golf. I mean, everybody it is obviously what you want. That and the the pe- the, the Pebble, Pebble Beach. Beach one, the AT and T. I did a commercial with Arnold Palmer. It was for blood thinner. Things are going well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, do, I know that commercial. You do too. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, we're sitting at, we're we're in uh, Latrobe, Pennsylvania, in the course where he grew up. He learned how to golf. His father was a greenskeeper, and I'm sitting in the golf cart with him. It's in between uh, setups, and we really hit it off. By the way, we were we became buddies. You know, we were really connected. And I would sit at his table in the clubhouse, the, his own table. You know, and I was sitting there when he ordered a Arnold Palmer drink, and I couldn't believe it. I said, Arnold palmer ordering an arnold palmer drink mm. and then the waitress asked me the service said what would you like i said i'll have a kevin nealon <laughs> <laughs> and the arnold looked at me he goes what's a kevin neal i said well it's exactly like an arnold palmer but a little taller and better looking <laughs> <laughs> but getting back to the at&t thing um i said man you know i always wanted to golf in the at&t pebble beach thing he goes you know you never golf in that i said no no it's hard to get in you know you gotta i mean guys like you know Ray Romano and um, a couple other guys play it, but they do you know benefits for them. Yeah, and uh, he goes, okay, I'll, I'll make a phone call. I said, really? He goes, yeah, no problem. So wouldn't you like two weeks later? I get this beautiful package in the mail. I open it up. It's a laminated box, and it's got the Pebble Beach on the top. I'm like, oh my, oh my god, it's happening! It's happening. I open it up. It's got the invitation. I'm like, that 
Arnold Palmer, man, he comes through, man. He comes through. I'm taking the stuff out. I take the actual invitation out. I start reading it. I say, I love this. Oh, Mr. Palmer is so nice, man. Um, and then I open up. It says, it says every entry, every person's got to pay $26,000. <laughs> and I said, that Arnold Palmer. <laughs> and I called I call his assistant. I said, I don't know, maybe there's a mistake or something. There's like $26,000 to play. And no mistake. $26,000. Yeah. I guess that's what they charge corporations. Yeah. Wow. I was like, maybe I didn't go read my invitations yeah. downstairs. I go, maybe look into it. <laughs> I said, I'm not a corporation. Yeah. yeah. I'm incorporated, but yeah. I'm not a corporation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I might not be playing the 18th. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's probably uh, I think we do shows. Like, you do, oh, you yeah. do a show for the volunteers. And, no, like, I never got there. Yeah. Oh, but that's what they—that's yeah. what I thought I was going to do. Yeah, <laughs> but I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> I mean, that's so funny. He's like, I can pull strings. You're like, you pulled no strings. Yeah. <laughs> you you did nothing except upset me. Yeah, Arnold. yeah, yeah. you led me on, and then you upset me. <laughs> <laughs> Just to read it, uh, you know, you, you talk about uh, uh, Andy Kaufman in here. You got to pay him. Like, uh, and did you you've met Andy? Yeah, you got him. Like when he was, I'm oh. like pretty fascinated with Andy. Kaufman, like it's like you know it's like originality like that's there's no one we say a lot of the line that it's over the moon he says goes down to memphis with the wrestling and he's he goes uh you know uh you're from memphis tennessee i'm from hollywood and that's how we would talk to him <laughs> yeah <he laughs> and we was. say it all the time like it's yeah it's one of my favorite lines like but that was like a that guy is like on his own like it's oh, just man. his own he thing. is just he he calls himself a song and dance man <laughs> but he he was so unique and original and i would watch him at the improv and he'd get up there and he'd read from the great gatsby <laughs> and he really you know and he, he would go on and on and on and people think he was kidding and then they start laughing and then some people got angry because he was going on too long <laughs> and he was there for like an hour reading the great gatsby and people would come back again they start laughing <laughs> but he was like that he was so unique and he was so interested in i think the psychology of an audience he would fool you he would do as latka he'd do these impressions that were really bad you know and then he goes and now for my elvis presley did you ever see this one <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and then he turned around and he'd do that and rip off his thing he had the jumpsuit on and come around and do a great impression of elvis. but i love that because yeah. he was so entertaining he wasn't just a comic with who are good but he he was different he was different in all the things i saw him on stage when he was doing his laundry he brought a washing machine up in the dryer, <laughs> and then he'd be eating an, uh, he'd be eating watermelon next to it. <laughs> Every once in a while, look over yeah. and just not be talking or anything. no, nothing. Yeah. Is it? Like, and that's like a night. That's like and he's the headliner. Like he's yeah. up there as long as he wants. Uh, I guess so. Yeah, I, I don't remember. So, yeah. But uh, my dad went and saw him uh, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in that, uh, yeah. Yeah, he saw Andy Kaufman and Steve Martin. I think Andy Kaufman took everybody out for milk and cookies after. Yeah, yeah, he and then did that. like would do stuff like that. I heard Steve Martin do that too. Yeah, took him in a pool and filled in the pool up with people, and then he would swim across them. Oh wow! I saw I think Andy, he uh, did it here at the Exit Inn. It's in his book, Born Standing Up. Yeah, that's a great book. I think he, uh, I want to say it was McDonald's or something. After the show, he walked everyone down from Exit Inn to McDonald's and just had everyone order. And that's so unlike him, too. I, I've gotten to know him over the years. And it's crazy, because I saw him in concert with the Blues Brothers open for him at the Universal Amphitheater. I mean, huge crowd. Yeah. And he comes out with a white suit, while a crazy guy with the arrow through his head. And he is so different from that. He yeah. is so reserved and quiet and kind of shy. And I don't know if that was him back then, but now he's, you know. And I've gotten to know him where we played the banjo together a lot. Uh, and I played poker at his house, uh, and you know I've even been in the Caribbean where we were body surfing, you know, with a bunch of other people, yeah. SNL people, and it was fun. I thought I can't believe it. I'm body surfing with Steve Martin for yeah. a couple of days, and then yeah. we all fly back to New York. And at JFK, I'm standing on the sidewalk uh, waiting for my cab, and he's waiting for his limo, and yeah. he comes over. He goes, you know. Just because we hung out for a few days doesn't mean we're going to be friends. <laughs> I thought that guy is so funny. I didn't hear from him like three years. <laughs> <laughs> He's, uh, I've never met him. Uh, yeah, giant fan. I mean, I'll make, a, I'll make a phone call. Yeah, please. $26,000. We just started playing. <laughs> go, Golly, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, but when he did, uh, like, I'm sure it was like a character, like being able to separate himself, like when he was on stage and being able to do that and like be 
that kind of character to like now he is like he's playing the ban- banjo and he's doing you know that he almost like when he quit it's i would think like him like eddie murphy they almost got bigger than stand-up can be they did stand up probably less than you did and less than i did of course yeah. um and then they got out I think, but they got so big, you know, like if you're doing, yeah, like it was like Steve Martin, or it seemed like you'd go out and they're just yelling yeah, yeah. everything. That was a problem. And it's a stadium and it's like, you can't even come up with new jokes. I know. And I, it's it's almost like you can tell, I think now, like I remember seeing Burr uh, when uh, Bill Burr. Adam Burr? Uh-huh. Adam Burr. Uh, <laughs> uh, comic didn't make it, but he was solid. Uh but Bill Burr, when he Aaron Burr, I think, Aaron, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Bill Burr was when he did the Philly rant, like when he I love trashed, that. Yeah. it was great. He trashed his Philly. Kind of what put him on the map, didn't it? It was. I, so I was in New York when that happened. I saw him like a couple days after. I mean, I was a he's like ten years ahead of me. Like, but I was a younger comic, and it was like crazy. And YouTube was like just starting to be like you know stuff would kind of go viral for the first time. So that went crazy. And then I remember seeing him after that because we the year before I'd go watch him at Caroline's. There'd be yeah. 30 people there you could go sit anywhere yeah, right. you wanted and then that next year is like caroline's would be like you can't even come in they wouldn't even let us come watch because it was so crowded but one night we did get our way in and we watched him and people would just start yelling out uh you know like i'm from atlanta and he they want him to just go trash all yeah. their towns <laughs> but i mean i always remember he put just such a stop to that he's like yeah i'm not doing like that's not I'm not. I'm not doing that. And so he had to like deal with that. And then he just then he just get into his act. And then, and then he would never do old jokes. He would just get into his, like his new jokes. And uh, it just almost like set the tone for to being like he's like I will. I'm going to just keep going. Yeah, I mean, there's some people like that. Some comics that just it's just their train of thought. They're, mm-hmm. That's the way they are. They just they're in that groove where that's everything they say is comedic. <laughs> You know, there are other style like Sebastian yeah. or um, or Bill Burr. I mean, I I, I started. Uh, I've never named a tour I was on, but last July, two Julys ago, I said I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a road. I'm gonna call it a tour. I'm gonna call it the Sugar Train Tour because I talk about sugar for like half a minute. <laughs> 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 and uh, and some do the Sugar Train Tour, and Nikki Glaze is doing some tour, and she must have done three tours. But and when I'm still doing my sugar trade tour, you know, <laughs> and uh, some people are just prolific and they come up with stuff and, you know, they can have like 10 specials in three years. Yeah. Uh, well, it's like, you know, one question I was, I, I liked was uh, uh, Norm. I heard uh, Norm asked Spade on like Norm's when he had the, uh, one of his shows uh, that maybe it's on Comedy Central or, or maybe it's his podcast that he had with the video on. And he asked Spade, he goes, if you had been coming up now, would you go do the route like that you guys had to take? You had to, guys had to do TV shows, SNL, all this stuff, versus the route that we can kind of take. We can just go be stand-up comics more than yeah. I think you you uh, like your generation could have done. You had to do so many other stuff. And it, I always like thought that I was like, you know what, that is a – like we're fortunate to like i'm fortunate enough to be like you had you know louis and burr and uh all these and you know chris rock well he's your generous but even chris had to go do a lot of stuff before he became his own it's so different kind of now thing. it is so di- i think comedy is much more uh, um accessible now when mm-hmm. i started off doing it it was such a novelty thing most people had never been to a comedy club before and then it started airing on TV. They have the brick wall, and everybody knew. knew it's then more people are coming out to the shows. And <clears throat> but it was different. And if you played at Madison Square Garden or an arena, you were Steve Martin. Yeah. And now it seems like more and more comics are filling these arenas. Sebastian like, did four. Yeah, Madison and, and also Gabriel Iglesias does. You know, Dodger Fluffy Stadium. Does. Dodger, Dodger Stadium. Stadium. Yeah. Bird did where uh, Fenway. Fenway. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just it's not like whoa. And I think the first maybe comic that was doing that in our generation was, um, um, oh, I'm blanking on his name now. He had MySpace. He had a lot of followers on MySpace. Oh, Dane Cook. Dane Cook, yeah. yeah. He seemed to be the first kind of the wave of this generation that did Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. Uh, he got he got so big. I mean, his first, his Comedy Central half hour is great. And uh, his special he did was great. It was great. People, he he got so big that people turned on him. Yeah. Like it was a guy that, that people hated him. Yeah, and it was it was almost like you got too big, and then like it's fun to like 
Bash. I remember like yeah. Family Guy made, made a joke about liking Dane Cook. And and then everybody just was like, I guess that's what we're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. I was like, he got like a bad rap with that, like where it's like, you're like, he's not, he just got, everybody loved him. He's huge. And then you get too big. They're like, well, now we, hate, you're cool to hate. Yeah. yeah. And so, I hear a lot about you, though. I hear people hating yeah. on you. Like, man, you <laughs> I got know, too crazy. Because you know? <laughs> well, like, he's too big. Yeah. Dane yeah. Cook did it with uh, Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone, like, had him on the cover. And then they like within a few months like write an article like trashing them. And you're like <laughs> you're just going with the vibe of like this dude's too famous. Well, like, there's too many people now that are Dane Cook level, even higher oh, than yeah. that. That they can't trash him because it's just becoming more of a a, a way of comedy. It's what people do. It's like working the main room as being yeah. in an arena now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's uh, well, you build your audience. You have that audience. Like when uh, Fluffy goes out. Uh, Gabriel, it's wow. I mean, he's got an audience. He's walking around with an audience. You don't like, want to say his last name, do you? Gabriel Iglesias. <laughs> 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 I almost yeah. said Iglesias. Yeah, 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 he would turn around. He would turn around. <laughs> Gabriel Iglesias. Gabriel, Gabriel. You can't say that I without go, sounding G-G. drunk. <laughs> Y'all know him. Uh, Iglesias. <laughs> Iglesias. Uh, Nicky Iglesias. And they're like, well, who's he talking about? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they they have this giant audience. So you walk around this audience, and then you're. Uh, you can kind of go do whatever you want. And then you can go, I remember someone, I thought someone did an interview. I mean, he's acted on some stuff, but, you know, being like, all right, do you want to go do a TV show? And he's like, I don't, you know. I, I think know. he had a TV show that yeah. maybe didn't. But it, it's almost becomes where it's like, is it worth it? Why? Why? Yeah. Like your TV show is to get you into arenas. Well, if you're getting into arenas Already. without it, then. How much How much uh, of filling the um, rooms for you is from the podcast? Not much, right? Uh, no, no. Uh, it's. I mean, we have a lot of people. I, I so still, people people do listen. Oh to yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's just trying to figure that out. Okay. Yeah. It goes. You know, I go. I'm there. My buddies that show up are there for the podcast. <laughs> no one listens to this podcast, Kevin. Uh, you oh, might I'm lose sure book do. sales. <laughs> uh, It'll be interesting to see if my book sales um, go up one or two after this. <laughs> if it goes, yeah. yeah. If it's a pop up, yeah, it might be. You know, it is I called. I exaggerate my brushes with fame. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned that already. I did show it. Yeah. We're going to post it. I'm not a good interview. I mean, it's a good, you know, Prince. So Prince, yeah. Prince. Can you, can you tell the story about your second time on Letterman? Oh, when, on Letterman. Oh, God. When it didn't yeah. go the way you wanted it no, to go? No, no. I mean, I, I saw so I do Letterman the first time, and I kill it. I'm happy. And then I get booked again for the second one. And I used to close my act with an easel and a big sketch pad and i would get somebody from the audience and sketch their picture with charcoal and i would keep adjusting their face and i would be getting charcoal on their face and they wouldn't know it Mm -hmm. so by the end of the sketch and the audience could see it yeah and by the end of the sketch the face is covered with black charcoal (laughs) (laughs) and then and i was my closer my act and it killed it killed and so i said i'm going to do this thing you know this easel thing that i close on okay fine and so we're that morning i went to all the clubs the night before did it that morning, I got a call from the um, segment producer. He goes, no, you're doing some easel thing? No, we want you to do stand-up. First of all, I don't have any stand-up left. I used <laughs> all my good stuff on the last one. So I have <laughs> mediocre <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And I don't have anywhere to practice because it's 10 o'clock in the morning and we're doing the show like at 5 or whatever. And I, I said, are you sure? Because I do this easel thing and it's really, it's really, no, 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 we, we want you for stand-up. Oh. Or, you know, I mean, you could come back another time. No, no, no. I'm in New York, man. I want to, yeah. I told everybody. Yeah, yeah. I spent my money already. Yeah. <laughs> and so I put together all my material that I have left. And like I said, there's nowhere to do it. So the maid comes, the housekeeper comes into the hotel room with a vacuum. I said, would you mind, like, if you just listen to my material, I'm going to get up on the bed, like it's a stage. So I get up on the bed, I'm standing on the bed and I'm doing my material for her. I don't think she understood English. Yeah. And she's kind of a weak smile, you know, and, and I finished my act and I got off and a standing ovation, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, and so I did Letterman that night and it was very mediocre <laughs> as i expected it would be <laughs> so i was kind of uh i was kind of angry at that segment producer he should have been on top of that more you know in your book you mentioned he now sells real estate in he you know, does. california <laughs> he does and you know i saw him about a month ago and he said 
hey, man, I'm looking, really looking forward to reading your book. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I didn't realize that people I wrote about would be reading this. Yeah. Because I did a book like 15 years ago. Nobody read it. <laughs> well, he was probably still doing stuff, and now he's selling real estate. So he's like, he's going to find estate. out he's mentioned in the – but you could make it fun It's uh, if you had a – after he reads it. I said no. I, I actually it was. I was happy for you to put yeah. that in there because you're doing well now. Yeah. You know? And uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what do you mean I'm doing well? Just yeah. when I put it in there. That's you're right. doing well. You're you selling real estate. It, I didn't say you weren't selling real estate. Yeah. You're selling real estate. You make some money. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to. I did do some um, caricatures of people in here. One specifically that hated it. Him oh. and his wife hated it. His agent hated it. And they said, under no condition are you going to use this to promote your book. And I don't know. If they meant in the book too, but it was already printed. I'm not going to yeah. you know, pull, rip the page out of every book, and uh, so I didn't use his his picture. But it's one of my favorite ones in the book. I can't tell you who you it can't is. tell it is. It's no. in the book. I'll show you the picture, but don't tell yeah. anybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, who do you think it is? Uh, you don't know all the pictures in yeah. there. That reminds this me. This is of, the first time I've seen this book. Uh, it's, <laughs> you haven't had that all your life. Yeah, I bought it earlier. No, th this is a this book. Brad Paisley. Yeah, it's Paisley. He seems like he would be. Ooh, he I didn't mind. Maybe. He didn't mind the picture. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask you legally? Can you can you draw pictures of anybody without their consent, or like can somebody object to a particular? Man, I went through all of this. Yeah, like after we, I was like near the end of the book. All of a sudden, the lawyer, the publisher's lawyer, is saying, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. What? what no, 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 no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where's the camera? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I would have thought. But you can't tell anybody. I'll show you who it is. But yeah. don't tell anybody, all right? It's really my favorite uh, picture in the book. Um, but uh, yeah, the lawyers, I mean, it's like crazy. They, you know, you got to get, well, just out of respect, we got permission to use people uh, in the promotion. Yeah. And of course, we didn't get it from, uh, they're speaking of the devil. That's a lot yeah. of men. He, yeah. He loved his. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, we opened up a can of worms. I said, you guys can open up a can of worms. You start asking people and, you know, they're going to not want it. And um, so, so we started asking people and that was a mistake. <laughs> like, you, I was just saying you could have just not asked people and just did it. Yeah. 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 But once it's in a book, it's like, it, I, I, I have a lot of friends that are character artists and they get published on cover time and all that. And they say, this is ridiculous. What are they, this is like, this is the First Amendment. This is satire. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is my favorite one of the book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. But, it's my favorite one. And then I looked online. It's got, like, it's just like a thousand caricatures of this person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, why me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, why would it be? Uh, I know. I mean, yeah. you know, it's kind I don't, of Do you ever think it's them or it's their people? Like, you know, uh, sometimes when, when you get like pushback on something, it's like you think, like, does your person even know? Like, I know, does right? Does the actual yeah. person know? Right. Because you would just think, like, I don't think they're like that. Like, when I always think it with writers. Like, when you see writers or if writers were crazy or if people would say they're very demanding and all this, you're like, are they or is their crew demanding? Exactly. That they bring out. We were just in uh, Grand Rapids and we were working and we went and worked out in like the gym and the strength coach i guess for the hockey team there because it was like a hockey arena and he was i mean he we walked in and he was like don't knock everything right like yelling at us like a real hockey coach i mean we're in his world yeah and he goes if i ever saw post malone he goes i'm gonna knock that guy out <laughs> he tore this whole weight room up and you're like okay you know and i'm like i mean it's post malone you're like i mean just a comedian so this is after malone this is after <laughs> yeah, <Malone>. yeah. <laughs> this, this, is, this is a post this is post post yeah and uh, so it's like that was his guy that he used to be like they tore it up and then you want to be like I bet it wasn't I don't know Post Malone at all you just know him from interviews he seems like I bet he would be a very nice guy yeah and you're like I bet his crew was not right and yeah. then like that's where it comes from but I mean that's also on Post Malone it's his fault yeah well the thing with the uh, the, the getting permission from the pictures it's not so much getting it from that person that mm -hmm. you, it's getting it from the photographers whose reference picture I used. Oh, oh interesting. Yeah. And you could, but couldn't you just say it's anybody's? Like uh, if you took a picture. Well, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Like of you and, you know, David Letterman, and you're like, why well, use that? And it's just my personal picture. Yeah. Or, yeah, or you can get it off a of video or TV, then you, it's, you're fine. But if you use somebody's photograph, I always say, how do you know I'm using your photograph? There's a yeah, thousand right. pictures of this guy with every angle and every direction. You yeah. know, how would you, 
uh, I mean, it is yours, but how would you know <laughs> yeah. that? Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. So it's not mine. You go, no, no, no. Yours was the best one. Yeah. So obviously you're on to something, but like, what but, if it wasn't? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah right. And, and, you know, uh, yeah, some of them are just really uh, – uh, but you go to Getty – Getty images and they'll, they'll oh, yeah. you got to buy them for like four or five hundred dollars each. Yeah. Getty was something that was one I learned. Uh, like if someone says they're with Getty, like pay attention to the picture you're about to take with them. Because I I once did a spot at uh what's the club in uh Gentleman's uh, Club or yeah yeah all right you're on the right track <laughs> uh, but worse worse you know? than that uh uh Ice House yeah yeah and so the guy I get done with the ice I'm just doing a spot there like this is uh t- you know 2012 probably 13 and uh i go and the guy's like hey i work with getty getty i want to take a picture well i don't even know what that means so i just go in there and i'm wearing like whatever it's a tuesday and i'm like and that picture was used so much <laughs> i think i use that for a caricature yeah, yeah. it would be one yeah. i look so ridiculous it looks like a picture that if you would take if you worked in a building that you would be like this yeah. is my office id yeah and it's just like and you're like oh like that's just the one that comes up because getty comes up yeah. so if someone ever says they're with getty just buckle down because this picture will be used yeah, it's weird because they could charge five hundred dollars for a picture they put mm-hmm. up, but you don't. Can you charge them? Say so, yeah, that's going to cost you. I six. had a weird thing with that once uh, with a guy. He asked, he wanted to take pictures, and uh, I did some pictures with him, and they were good. And then uh, I was like, "Hey, I'm going to use it for the tour posters, so just my personal, like you know." And we we're going to pay him, and then he was like, he started wanting to charge something crazy, well, and like come back, yeah. and you're like, "What do you?" I go, "I don't." I just was trying to like promote this tour. Like I'm using, and I was like, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pay you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, like, it's like, what's, well, you know, cause it's, I don't know. Yeah. Photography is a weird thing where it's like, they use you. It's you. Like yeah. this picture is of you. Yeah. And then this person could be like, well, you can't use it. And you're like, but I'm the main <laughs> yeah, thing. Right. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> that's me. Like I get you are taking the, like I, but is there not a, 50 50 kind of thing going on <laughs> should or? be there should be i use uh i went on ellen about seven months ago and she was showing some paintings i did and she put up this one painting i did and from a reference picture and this photographer uh calls my manager says hey um i i could tell that that's my photograph that you know uh, um and uh he's got it on his instagram and i'd like credit for that and also, he showed it on Ellen. I didn't show it on it. She just picked the one she wanted. Yeah. And, um, and you know, it's on Ellen to help him promote his book. And um, if it's going to be in his book, um, then let's talk. Let's talk about some kind of um, reimbursement. Yeah. So I changed the picture entirely so it doesn't uh, look yeah. like his photograph. You but just I'm, go, this book's this book's costing you like seven, $17,000 so a week to use. <laughs> like, I'm waiting for the lawsuits yeah. to come in. <laughs> like, You've even got sketches of people on planes on there. Yeah, I would sketch. I do sketch people on airplanes Yeah, because I'm so bored and I've seen every movie. <laughs> yeah. So I'll get like, I'll take out a napkin or a barf bag, preferably empty, and I'll start <laughs> sketching on there. Like people sleep and you know, their mouth open. And there's some of those in the front of the book. And then I, I, I never show it to them or tell them, but I'll, I will write the seat number and the flight number and where yeah. we're going. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, cool. Wow. Yeah. I hope they sue you too. Yeah. yeah. The dog get... sued me. That little dog sued me. That yeah. guy not wearing his mask correctly on the yeah. flight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. He gets canceled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I got like Conan in the beginning when we were writing a script together and from SNL. A lot of these guys I, I sketched <clears throat> during the table read at SNL. Yeah. I like that yeah. you got you got your seat numbers, which is good. Because yeah. it'd be great if you you should would have been funny, like you're not in first class and you're like 22 four. <laughs> you know, somebody saw and that. You're like, golly, Kevin, yeah. are you not doing good, dude? Somebody like, did see that and they go, oh, I see you flying first class yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, no well, upgrades. They're upgrades. Yeah, they're upgrades. They're all upgrades. I saw John Since Hamm. Cincinnati to Chicago. That's a hot flight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw John Hamm on a plane once, and I don't know him, but I was gonna say hi to him. Yeah. But then I thought, I don't want to go back and coach. <laughs> you know i don't belong back there <laughs> yeah. the open the curtain shut it it makes noise everybody sees it yeah, yeah. louis anderson used to do a good bit about you know being in first class 
and the people in the back, you know, watching them eat peanuts and stuff. They don't get the peanuts. Yeah, oh, we're up here. These are mine, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does it much better. Or he did do it better. <laughs> he did do it better. Yeah. He was unreal. He was great. He, he would murder too. Oh, the timing he had was great. He yeah. didn't feel like he had to rush it or anything. He would take his long pauses. And I really admired that about him. And uh, I worked with him. Last time I worked with him, <clears throat> he likes to go out after the show and eat. Uh -huh. And he wants you to come with him and eat. Yeah. And he used to like to get recognized a lot. <laughs> I've kind of gone through that phase. In fact, yeah. I did a radio show once. I would do a radio show in Austin like every year. With, he was like the Howard Stern of Austin. Mm -hmm. And we'd usually go out the next day or that night. And we went out. The last time we went out, this is like 10 years later. Last time we went out for lunch, he said, you know what I noticed about you? You're not getting recognized as much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know what? You're right, actually. I, I didn't notice that because it was gradual. But it used to be you walk in someplace, heads turn. But now it's like, you know, maybe the bus boy, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> saw you somewhere. <laughs> he mistook you he for was, somebody I, else. I think my grandmother used to watch <laughs> yeah. you. So they yeah. say something crazy. Do you work in my bank? You yeah, look familiar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're so tall that I would think you already get people looking just height-wise. They do, but they don't think that I'm this tall. Yeah. I, oh, I, that's true. I was on a train once coming from uh, Rhode Island to um, New York. It's like a three-hour train ride. And I'm getting off the train, and this woman comes up to me. She goes, are you Kevin Nealon? I said, yeah. She goes, that's what I thought. I was watching you the whole train ride, and you just kept looking like you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I know. There's a reason for that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it, yeah that's interesting. To, like when you <clears throat> gradually uh, – like I've noticed it. Like when I go out, it's 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 it, you know it goes from like all right, it happens like once a week, and then you know if I'm in Nashville, it could be more. To then it's kind of like you know it's never a bother. I don't know. Yeah. I'm never bothered by it. like because it's not like it's a huge thing, but it's like then it's a you know you think it's kind of daily. But I mean, I would think with you, you just being tall, it would just even if I be, well, when you like yeah, they're going, tall people are very popular whether they're in stand up or not. <laughs> yeah, you're just stared at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's kind of tall. And, and you know, I don't think people have a short person complex. I never look at them and go, oh, they're short. Mm -hmm. But I think short people are more subconscious about being short than tall people are be being tall. Although sometimes I'll see somebody really tall and I'll say to my wife, am I that tall? And I'll stand next to them just to see. <laughs> yeah. And thankfully I'm not. Oh, yeah. Like if you're Shaq. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you walk in a room. Imagine being as tall as Shaq and not being Shaq. Now you just walk in a room. It's it's just yeah. I know he takes up the whole room. He should yeah. like he should invest in the Shake Shack. Yeah, you know, like he uses his name. He could do commercials for him. Yeah, he does, and he's he not afraid. Everything. He's not afraid of a commercial. No, no he's no. not. Yeah, he's not. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly not. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't do mainstream commercials, which is kind of fun. <laughs> like it's. I mean, it's like main. It, you know, it's not like Shake Shack or like a. It's always like just some the general, liberty, the general, the general. Yeah. Yeah. it's all these like <laughs> random. Bond. <laughs> yeah, you're like, what are you? What is that? You I know. noticed that some of these athletes only have one little line. You know, they probably came in and got out. Yeah, yeah, and not a big um, investment for them, and they probably got a couple million. I, the the Chiefs have one now with uh, the coach uh, Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, and for State Farm, and I I, I feel it's kind of weird. Like I think you're the coach, yeah. and you're being <clears throat> funny. You're in his commercial, and then you're like that dynamic. I would just think plays. Like it's it's a very funny commercial, but you're like you also got to yell at these guys. Yeah, that's as right. As a coach, yeah. so yeah. now you're, it's almost like uh, you know, I think that's what Tom Brady. Tom Brady started doing too many commercials. Did like, he really? I did a commercial with Aaron Rodgers, me and Dana, oh. as Hans and Franz. Uh, it's kind of characters we used to yeah. do on SNL. No, everybody, and, uh, everybody yeah, knows. Some people know. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> older no. people. But yeah. um, but yeah, I worked with Aaron Rodgers, and that was that was kind of cool. He was very low key. Yeah, he. Uh, I don't think he knew who we were either. <laughs> <laughs> well, he would know who you are. It would be uh, like our the the kid that sells, sells merch, Chase, which everybody thinks he was. Everybody thought he was my son, and he just sells merch. So we have everybody. I just told everybody, I was like, just keep going to ask him if he's my son, and he'll come back. If you're doing it, he comes back every night. He goes, tonight was a big one. Like he's like, <laughs> he goes, I mean, just they wouldn't, and he doesn't know I'm like told everybody to do this. But it was the idea that's the funniest to me is that I would have a 23-year-old son and I've never mentioned it. I just and I put him out of merch. Yeah. But he I, some of his references, I mean, he won't know. He, like we we just did a video. He saw a phone that, you know, like a your Rotary. old phone. Yeah. Rotary phone. And he was like, I don't 
I was like, have you ever even seen this? He goes, I think there was like a toy when <laughs> yeah. I was a kid, maybe. He's yeah. like, they had one with no, you know, just no no concept of it. Yeah. At you, all. you talk about the coach and, and um, yelling at people. I'm good friends with Tony LaRussa. I've no. got a lot of benefits for him. And whenever he calls me, I pretend I'm a baseball player, you know, <laughs> in the, uh, you know, half, uh, you know, in between innings and he's, or before the game and he's giving us a little talk. Yeah. And I'm just pretending I'm like, third base player and he's going you know now what i need you to do if you could do it yeah coach what do you need <laughs> <laughs> i'll be there yeah i'm do your you man do, uh the benefits become you do a lot of benefits yeah like you get asked to do like it's so many it's so many and some of them you get paid for it. people yeah. don't know that afterwards yeah. they go thanks a lot man for doing this it's really nice of you yeah. steve martin had a good joke once he goes he's at the con at the benefit he goes well congratulations you raised um Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars minus my salary. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there seems to be like a lot of fundraisers nowadays. Now like when I first started out, there wouldn't be not that many. But now a lot of golf things, a lot of Oh man, a lot of golf. And yeah, yeah. it's amazing how many interesting people golf, isn't it? Uh-huh. You know well, there's a whole group yeah. that's like getting uh I, I was someone asked me to do something. But it's like some of you just can't I'm like, I can't do it. And then they would like list athletes where you're like, yeah, I would love to like golf like with that. But you're like, those guys are retired. I know. Like, you're like, I'm doing shows. Yeah. <laughs> like you wouldn't go ask them in like just the, they start in the NHL. And then you're like, do you mind playing in every single golf event? You're like, I would, I mean, I would love to, but. You know who I was surprised to see uh, after one? He was actually, they, some of these guys are musicians and they'll play afterwards. Robbie Krieger from The Doors. He oh. loves the golf. Yeah. He was there. Huey Lewis. I know you lose. I don't know the Robert Krieger. Robbie Krieger. Yeah. I wouldn't. I mean, I'm. Have you heard of The Doors? I've heard of The Doors. Yeah. I've yeah. seen that movie. <laughs> I like the idea of all of the. Like, yeah, yeah. The, the idea <clears throat> of what they do. I'm a big fan of that. The idea of it, but not <laughs> the, the actual thing. <laughs> no, I even like some of their songs. I don't know what their songs mean. Yeah. yeah. But I, it's a world that I could see that I would be interested in. And then. If you had time, but you're always working. I don't have time. And then it's. But even if I started it, I would then be like, uh, you know, I watched the Leonard Skinner documentary because I was like, I want to figure out their deal. <laughs> and then, it, and that one was great. But then, you know, then, I, you know, you're like, then they died in a plane crash. And then I tried another one. I tried someone else too. And I was like, I don't think I can do two in a row. <laughs> but you talk about people forgetting more. And you talk about in the book when you talk to Jim Carrey, who's another artist, he said, 50 years from now, no one's going to remember our, everyone who knew us is going to be dead. Right. But our paintings will live on. Do you feel that way? Well, <clears throat> I think some of the older actors, that was probably true. But now with digital, yeah. we're going to be around forever. Yeah. Jim Carrey's given up, basically. <laughs> <laughs> you mean? Well, no, I'm saying you're, you've are you got a better thing. Go, you're, he used to have hope. I'm saying Jim Carrey's already given up. <laughs> He's just going, no one's going to remember. You're like, you should go, Jim, take it easy. Maybe you. But <laughs> Well, he has actually retired so to speak from mm -hmm. acting i mean he he's i guess he'll be really picky but he, he's worked so much over the years and now that painting is kind of a relaxation for him right but i think he did say that at a party i was at he says people won't remember you because he got into sculpturing and painting he says if you have a painting what people will remember you forever like monet i said well you gotta be monet though <laughs> yeah <laughs> and if you have a crappy painting then people remember you all your life too yeah it's like a first pitch. I found out that Monet was a caricature artist too. Be oh, before, really? Either during or before, but more it was more political back then. When did they get started in like art? Like, do they? Is it a very Monet? This is a long time ago. Yeah. Was he around? Was he on SNL your first season? He was actually a feature player. Oh, yeah. Wow. He was yeah. in the doors. Yeah, yeah he was. <laughs> did but... uh, no, like when did Monet? Did they like those people? We have art, some art stuff. I don't know if, but is uh. Leonardo da Vinci was also a character artist. Was he really? I, I just read a book on him, and I, I stayed. I had that book for maybe a year as I was reading it because I loved it so much. My son kept going, "You're not finished with that book yet." I said, "I'm savoring it, man. I love this." Well, that's uh, perfect for him because <clears throat> that's one of the facts I have. He took so long to do the paintings that it took him, I think, three years to do the Last Supper and 15 years to do the Mona Lisa. He carried the Mona Lisa around with him in, a, in his in his cart when he went to. Rome with it from Milan. <laughs> he carried it. And he would just do a little bit every time, you know, over the years. <clears throat> and he said he, they, uh, the guy who auction, sanctioned it finally threatened to cut off his funding if you don't hurry up and finish this thing. Oh, he had to give back a lot of 
a lot of uh, commissions that you know, that people <laughs> yeah. hired him to do stuff. He just didn't want to. He got lazy and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be <laughs> yeah, fifteen years. Yeah, I mean, and then you see the Mona Lisa, you're like, I mean, fifteen years, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's good. But yeah, fifteen you're like, years. Ah, the Last Supper. I'd be like, okay, we got a lot of people <laughs> yeah. up there. The Mona Lisa. You're like. What are you talking about? She's not about? even doing anything in she's this She's not even, I mean, she's kind of okay. Like, she starts to attract back in there. You go, I don't know. I guess I'd go on a date with her, maybe. Like, but It might have even been him, they say. Oh, really? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. You know what's fun to do? You go to the Louvre in uh, Paris. Uh, and everybody you, do this. Everybody's looking at the Mona Lisa. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel bad for you, the paintings in that room. <clears throat> but as they're looking at the Mona Lisa, stand nearby on another wall. And look at a different painting and go, wow. <laughs> and see how many people turn around. <laughs> I mean, wow. Yeah. <laughs> this is unreal. Yeah. Do you did you do you love art? Like if you, you do. like yeah. I would study the impressionist for a while. Yeah. Um, but you don't do impressions. Uh, <laughs> not really. I mean, okay. It's too hard. Yeah. Yeah. It is hard. But um <clears throat> That's why when I got an SNL, I thought, why are they hiring me? I don't do characters or accents or impressions. I'm just a stand-up, a really, really good stand-up. <laughs> You'll see. I'll show you. Yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> but you do. But you're your own. My favorite thing that, uh, I, and I've seen you do it at Zany's, like when you leave and come back. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's my favorite thing. I, I don't do that too much anymore because it's so much work. <laughs> it is a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot Man. of work. You got to set it up. Gotta get yeah. up so early tomorrow morning. I don't know why I make these flight resume, you know, flights so early, man, because I come here and have a good time. You know, yeah. you guys are fun to hang out with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then at the end, I, I leave and app applauding, and I come back and say, That's nice, man. I really appreciate that you love me. And I get it too, but I gotta get up early in the morning. You know? yeah. And it just kind of digresses, you yeah. know, where I get angry at them. Look, I said I gotta get up in the morning. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. You're not the Nashville I know yeah. or I remember. <laughs> Such as the crowd's like starting to leave and they're like, oh, I guess it's still going <laughs> yeah, on. Like, yeah. You threaten to sue them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, yeah, my lawyer will come out. And uh, yeah, some people are angry because <laughs> they thought oh. they were out of there. <laughs> that's, I mean, I, I, that's so funny. Yeah, I, I like doing that kind of stuff. Um, but it was, it, it kind of, Anytime I could think like Andy Kaufman thinks, yeah, I like to do it. Yeah, you know, like I, I would do this uh, story thing where I, I wouldn't finish a sentence because my father used to be so distracted when he's fixing something growing up. He goes, "Kev, hand me my, uh, uh, I mean, what, Dad? What screwdriver? Ham sandwich? What? what do you, you know?" So I would leave the end of the sentence open, and people would just naturally fill it in for it because they want to help you finish the sentence, and. That worked for me for a long time, <laughs> and I would do that, and people would just keep giving me really weird kind of words, mm -hmm. you know. Like, uh, so I, you know, I, I pull over, and the guy throws me down on the pavement, and I'm like completely nude. Yeah, yeah I'm nude. <laughs> yeah. And I go along with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's yeah. true story. I'm not kidding around. You yeah. know, but well, that, you're so good at getting back in, even like that, like where you go, like true story. I'm not kidding. Like yeah, you're yeah. so like the uh, the flow of it, right? And it almost like you forget the person yelled nude. Right. Right. Here's the other thing too. I I don't mind whether other comics do this, but for me, I don't say something's a joke. Like I wrote that joke. Uh, like, no, you're not supposed to know it's a joke. I'm just telling you this is the story. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is this is this idea that I was thinking of, or this is something that happened to me the other day. Yeah, that's the other thing. Do you do time references? Like I'll keep track of what I said. I'll say last Tuesday. <laughs> so anyway, later on. Yeah. So you know, a month ago, I, it doesn't yeah. even matter. What the time? I'll, I'll I'll say recent like the yeah I have a joke about uh, golf with my wife and I'm like so the other day me and my golf my wife went golfing and but it's like yeah it was a year ago yeah when I started writing this story the hard part is when you get when you're uh, you know our my daughter is ten now and then you can see your you see your joke actually age <laughs> yes because you're like you know she just turned two you're like she drove to the show <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I know. like I could get a new act dude. I, I did that too I, I was talking about my son being ten. And I was 63, and it's a big kind of age gap, you know, and he realized I'm an older father, and I have a whole bit on that. And some guy comes up to me after the show, he goes, you know, I Googled you, your son is 15. And I go, I know, that's when I started the joke. You know, <laughs> it's uh, five years ago. Yeah, yeah. I just haven't gotten it out anywhere. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You go, yeah. oh, man, I got to start writing some new yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, then you can then go like, all right, I'm going to go, you go do a Tonight Show, or you go do, or, you know, a special or something like that. Yeah, yeah. 
a lot of people say they do a special. They got to just start from ground zero again. They got to start, oh, from, yeah. you know. And I, I'm like, no, no. I just keep doing the same thing because nobody watches the special. You know? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah. I'm at the place now where I got to start. And then I'll do another special five years later. Same material. Same as the first special. <laughs> yeah. I do always think you can do – like that is funny to think that because you can sometimes you go – because I've, I've had people come to the same shows and stuff. And uh, How do you feel about that? Uh, <laughs> well, it, well, if you know they're there and they're up front, it's not – like when they do it at comedy clubs or something, you're there, you're like, just go sit in the back. Like I don't want to just see you. I don't want a. I don't. I'd rather not know you're doing it. I don't mind it. It's extremely flattering, obviously. And that they come back. I appreciate it. Uh, but if I know, it's kind of like gets in your head, and you're like, "What? Well, they're just seeing these jokes again." Comics are just, we're, you know, we're doing the same thing over and over again. So you're just like so, like kind of nervous. Yeah, like, yeah. I try and, to work something new in that I hadn't done before. I will. And what's funny with an audience, I we will do it for you, one yeah. person. Yeah. So if one person goes, I'm going to stay for the second show, I will then go do a different, I'll try to throw in some something different Yeah. for that singular person. They could be sitting with 500 people <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I will know. make the show for that person. I know, man. I know. They're, they're, they're there and it's kind of, I'd rather just not know. Yeah. That they, yeah, true. You know. I true. And then afterwards you'd be like, oh, that's awesome. Thank e- you. Even if it's a year later, they come yeah. to see you. It's like, oh yeah. man, do I have any new stuff? Oh, <laughs> I have a card I write everywhere, like the do place you? I'm at. That's good. They, and then you kind of, you, I've done it since the beginning. Oh, that's smart. And so like, you just would always like kind of, you can see your act kind of change. And like, I always like to wear. think I'll have all new material by the next time I'm here, oh, but I don't yeah. think it, it doesn't have, I remember the first time I went to a comedy club in New York. I walked out of thinking, man, these people are so funny. Oh my God, they're hilarious. I went back like the next week, exact same act. I go, okay, I get it. I get it. Now it's an act. They're good. You know, Robin Williams was the first one I ever saw in a late night set. And I remember, you know, he's this, like does whatever. And uh, and so he was on Leno and he does all stuff. It was like so funny. And then I remember he was on Letterman the next night, and I watched that one, and he like told the same things, and uh, it was like, yeah, it was very like interesting because you're like, that's a guy that you think is just making it, yeah, yeah, show. but you like, there's still he's different. It's he's a going framework. To be different. It's a, it's framework. a framework. Yeah, yeah. I, I've noticed that too. At first, I thought, man, this guy's improving every night. He's going through women's purses and pull out stuff. Or oh, look at this, you know. And after watching him for a while, I think, okay, yeah, he's got this frame that he does. He plays around with it, you know, but it's basic frame. That he does. It's like when people, audiences would tell comics that, uh, or they'd be like, oh, I watch this comic. He did a different hour every night. You're like, well, he didn't. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. he's no one. Because if he did, he would be the greatest comic that's ever lived yeah. on earth. Yeah. 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 I was like, he might be doing crowd work. He might be doing, like, but there's, like I said, there's frame. There's something. Yeah. Yeah. That it feels different. You know, or yeah. just, you know, I got I, okay. I have a lot of numbers in my act. I forced the audience to do math a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I had this joke where I said, when I was 18, uh, I was I did this, 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 and now I'm 18 times two. I'm 36 and blah, blah, blah. And it was one of my better jokes. Then I turned 37. I was like, well, wait, <laughs> it doesn't divide out either now. So now I you're had doing to kill the, the joke. And then yeah. when I turned 38, I started doing the joke again. <laughs> <laughs> so every other year, even year, I would bring that joke back. <laughs> That's funny. So you're about to turn 51. So we're- I got to cancel it for a while. It's going to be an off year. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right. So that's your joke. It's like maybe be like, well, I'm going to wait till he gets 52 and then I'll come back. <laughs> and I turned 51 later this week, guys. So oh, happy you better, birthday. You better happy go birthday. see me yeah. quick, tell this oh, joke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. People go, yeah, I see you got rid of that joke. That 51 year old yeah. joke. Yeah, I'm making room for new stuff until next year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and they go, this guy does new stuff every, every couple of years. <laughs> it's a brand new stuff. Uh, uh, well, there's probably so much stuff that. Well, I do want to say one thing though. I was because you do caricatures, and there's a lot of char- char- character. I can't say the word. Caricatures, yeah. All right, of of themselves, and one of the most famous is uh, George H. W. Bush because Dana Carvey played him so well that most people think that that's what they think of. And yeah. A lot of that stuff that Dana Carvey did, George H. W. Bush never really even did. Yeah, never did. And it's just kind of fascinating. I was reading about their friendship, and they had a great friendship. And when uh, George H. W. Bush lost the election. People were his staff were down, and he called Dana Carvey, asked him to come perform at the Christmas party. Yeah, and they were great friends. And I, I just didn't know if you uh, was a good friend of George. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. Yeah. Well, I was reading about there's a there's a term called flanderization, 
which is from Ned Flanders from The Simpsons, where basically characters evolve into a caricatures of themselves. He was just a uh, smart neighbor opposite Homer Simpson, but then he becomes this Bible thumper, and now he's, you know, and there's a lot of characters like that. They talk about Creed from The Office and yeah. Joy from Friends and stuff like that. And But uh, I really don't know, have anything to this except I thought. Uh, yeah, I mean, caricatures are kind of like um, when you do an impression of somebody like Dana. Dana is more of a mimic than an impressionist. Mm. Like, hey, like he'll start off with Bush saying, "Not gonna do it, not gonna do it," and then it became, "Not gonna do it, not gonna," mm. you know. What I mean? um, so, but which he never said. No, never, never yeah. said, never really? said. Not the not God because he, he he was just like not God die. He never said that. <laughs> but and I think some of the other ones, like the older actors, you know, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Yeah, and I don't think they ever said that either. Yeah, you know. Hey, by the way. Um, you gonna do my hiking show tomorrow? Or yeah, you still on for that? Yeah. Okay, cool. That's yeah. uh, that uh, debuted last last week with Paul Rudd. Oh yeah. And, oh, I uh, saw it. Yeah. Yeah. So every Thursday it airs on, every on Thursday. YouTube. Yeah. YouTube, on YouTube hiking with Kevin. Hiking Neven. with Kevin. Just hiking with Kevin. Hiking with Kevin. Yeah. We'll go promote it. Hiking with Kevin. It's like Neven. fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. I edit it down to. Yeah. How long's the hike? Hike like four hours. Uh, get after it. <laughs> yeah. You got I've shoes. Been a hike, I'm a hiker now. Are you really? Yeah. What, what do you We've mean by hiking? hiking. Uh, I go, you know, uh, around my neighborhood. And, just around. Yeah. <laughs> now, we did. We started doing it on the road, like, because it was, like, getting, you know, yeah. just trying to mix it up and kind of see the land. We went to, uh, I was in Montana, went to the top, oh, of, went up nice. to 9,300 elevation. Jeez. Uh, From right the bottom? Yellowstone. Started at the bottom? Started at the bottom, zero. That's serious, hiking. Uh, yeah. We, yeah. We went up, I want to say we went up, uh, I forget, like 3,000 or something. Maybe it was like six at the bottom, and wow. then uh, so that was like a six-hour hike, and uh, we started going, you know, just really going up and like seeing stuff, and you're just up there and you're just out there alone. It's, it's well, you got awesome. all the stuff, right? Because we're going to Nepal. Okay, uh, <laughs> I got a well, you know, David Spade did a hike with me. I've done over like a hundred hikes now. Yeah. I'm exhausted, but uh, <laughs> Spade did one. But there were some um, pre work Prerequisite, pre what is it? Prerequisites. He needs a chair. Prerequisites. Sit in. No, it had to be not traffic hour. Yeah, getting there or going home. There couldn't be any hills. Yeah, and he shows up with a cup of coffee, <laughs> and we were hiking along this flat, perfectly flat trail, and it went up maybe one percent incline, and we're on it. He goes. Do we are we going uphill now? <laughs> I say, yeah, we have like one percent. He was just like so picky about it. <laughs> but my hikes have gone from really steep inclines over the years to less and less and less <laughs> to now it's almost flat. Well, that's good. I mean, you, it'd be hard to talk with someone. If Th- that's gets, how I came up with yeah. it. I was hiking with the actor Matthew Modine. We're yeah. friends, and we're we were hiking hard, and we're both out of breath, and we hadn't seen each other. We're catching up, and we're talking like, "So, Matthew, when you came." <laughs> Well, you came to Hollywood, did you? <laughs> Full metal jacket. And, you know, and uh, we couldn't understand what we were saying because we were so out of breath. And I thought this would be funny if I videotaped this. And I, so I did, and I posted it on Twitter, and people loved it. So every week I got a different friend until I ran out of friends. <laughs> and I started sending letters to publicists to see if I could get to the hike. So that's kind of how it originated. We were out of breath. So that, yeah, so it's easier, the less inclined. The better, and I'm usually the one that's huffing and puffing more than anybody. I look at it, and I go, "Geez, I'm so out of shape," you know. But I'm talking too. I'm holding on the camera. It's stuff. a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm a I'm a fan of that show. How do people know when you're excited? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You're the same way. It's this. <laughs> I, tell, I say that on stage. If I walk out, I go, "Guys, I'm. I mean, I'm the most excited." <laughs> I did. Uh, we were in Grand Rapids, and it was a hockey arena. A hockey arena. It was sold out. And I walked out, and I was like, I, "I, you know, it's like I swear I am like I can't believe it, like, but it just doesn't, you know." Yeah, I don't, I my, don't show excitement. My wife gets on me about that. She goes, "I'm so enthusiastic and demonstrative, and I get excited about things, but you don't, you don't, you just why? Why don't you have any kind of?" I said, first of all, I'm dead inside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Second of all, I, you know, um, I don't trust anything. I, I feel like it's not going to happen. So we look yeah. at open houses. She goes inside. She goes, oh, my God, this is great. This is amazing. And I'm like, take her to another room. I said, don't get overly excited because it's going to hurt with the negotiations. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just say it's okay. Yeah, and yeah. so she would always get on me about that. So the next open house we went into, I go, oh, my God, this is amazing, this yeah. house. She goes, okay, take it down a notch. Take it down <laughs> a notch. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm like that, too. 
Yeah, yeah, it's hard. I do. I, I, uh, if you don't feel it, why are you gonna like? Well, it's. A, it? I am excited. I like. Oh, I'm lo- like. I love it. But I'll. In, <laughs> if you say it, you d- I'll describe it, which is also bad. Walking open house, like I'll be like, <laughs> like is it, I, you know, like, it's almost you can't hide it. You are just like I love this house so, much. and I'll <laughs> yeah, say, I'll just say too much, and then yeah, yeah. now you're in big trouble. My problem is, and it's really annoying. I match the enthusiasm of the person greeting me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like if somebody goes, "Hey man, how's it going?" I'll say, pretty good. How about yourself? But if they come in heavy, like, hey, man, I haven't seen you in a while. I say, I haven't seen you either. <laughs> yeah, 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 it could yeah. be like a stranger, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so when you meet Kevin, just go up. Just know that. Know whatever energy you bring. You're getting it back, baby. You're getting it back. Yeah. <laughs> I deliver. Yeah. That's it. Uh, all right. Uh, I exaggerate my brushes with fame. Uh, available everywhere books available are sold. Everywhere books are sold. Fantastic books are yeah. sold. Yeah, this is uh, well, Amazon. Yeah. This is a great. It really is. You know, coming up with an idea to write a book is yeah. very hard to do. It is that just the the hook or the whatever it is that you're going to write about. This is like perfect. It is an autobiography, sort of, and and there's not just pictures in there. Some people uh, like pictures, which is fine. You don't have to read it, but there's also words if they want to look at the words too. <laughs> well, it's it's. I mean, a lot of the stories they said Bud Friedman owned uh, the improv, started the improvs. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Carson. You know, it's I mean, Kaufman, that's crazy. Uh, you have the years of all of them. Uh, yeah. I think everybody's dead that's in here. <laughs> yeah, pretty and, much. Uh, it's more of an obituary Manny, yeah. than anything else. Yeah, it's more than obviously paid Manny. Eli like, Manny, you heard of their passing with Emma Stone. <laughs> yeah. uh, sad stuff, but uh, Stern, which uh, it's yeah, it's awesome. This, yeah, I mean, I good. really, I'm blown away by the uh, you know the idea of like you think about if you had to write a book, it's like coming up with an idea. This is like such a perfect. Thanks. Like I'm, you would, other authors would be jealous of just like, <laughs> God, you figured it out. Like, well, you know, also uh, the holidays are coming up. So great gift idea. Easy to wrap. Hmm. Thanksgiving presents, send it out. Uh, <laughs> Halloween presents. Halloween presents. It's a great book. It's uh, very funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. These are the best books because it's like written by a comedian, very funny guy. We're all. It's not that famous. big. It's good size to carry. It's not a coffee yeah, table. It feels book. like a. It's more of a nightstand it's book. It's a good book. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, this is a book you want to sit out. And yeah. you'd be like, oh yeah, you're like that's cool. I could take it on the plane. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah. Do you read? Have you read it on the plane like this? <laughs> you read it. <laughs> that's not a bad idea. You should do it. I read it when I come out on stage. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. That's how you get to do a book tour, and then you get to just do stand up. That's comics are going to be. They're like built yeah. for like book tours. Oh yeah, yeah. You just go do stand up. Uh, I used to sell like if I had a DVD out, I would stand out front and sell it. Yeah, but I realized. It wasn't worth the amount of money I made every night to have people pull me in and cough on me, you know, and want to talk. So yeah. I stopped the merch thing. Yeah. <laughs> got into stocks. Yeah. <laughs> Crypto. <Hang Yeah>. like- <laughs> you know what? I'm actually very, uh, I'm set in life because my wife comes from old crypto. Oh, wow. and, uh, I mean, we're very comfortable. Very yeah. comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> this book means nothing. I mean, it doesn't. No. Mean no, that's just a hobby, right there. Yeah, this is just a yeah. hobby. He actually needs the money for to pay off the lawsuits he's made. Because I mean, it's a yeah. wild number. I yeah. mean, you yeah. got it's uh, Joaquin Phoenix. I mean, that guy's going to light you on Phoenix. fire. Uh, I just don't see how you're not. Oh my god. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yeah, she's I mean, coming. Her family, me. Jennifer Aniston. She will yeah. uh, will not put up with this. Billie Eilish got new money. And yeah, she's, she got and she's on the rise. Oh, yeah. she's, she's trying to bring down her whole career like with a this. A sack of uh, Bitcoin out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody go buy this book. Uh, also watch Hiking with Kevin. Uh, I will be on it. I'm yeah. excited about it. Yeah, dude, thanks for sitting in with thanks us. Thanks for having me, guys. Uh, thanks, our Nate. fourth uh, part of this. <laughs> a lot of people don't do that Mr. right there. <laughs> a lot of people leave him hanging. Yeah, I they refuse the to touch him. It's because he buttoned his shirt too far down. And uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. God, that's been a while. Mm. Yeah, have you been thinking about that for a while now? Did you just I just saw it? it at the end, but I'm glad that I just told you now. I don't know why you told him that. I was copping some peaks down well, there. Yeah, <laughs> well, because it's over now, so I just want him to feel that guilt. Oh yeah, that he just we just you can't did, erase that. Yeah, it's you two hours that. of just uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, that is tough. <clears throat> what about hiking with Kevin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They go, like, clean it up, dude. We're a clean show. Uh, no. All right. We will see you <laughs> right. uh, next week. We love you all. Thank you. See you next week. Bye. That was great, man. That was great. <laughs> Killed yeah. it, you guys. Good job. Good job. <laughs>
Nate Land is produced by Nate Land Productions and by me, Nate Bargetzi, and my wife, Laura, on the All Things Comedy Network. Recording and editing for the show is done by Genovations Media. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to catch us next week on the Nate Land Podcast.